Hello, everybody. I hope you're all having a wonderful day so far. Today, we are going to be continuing our levels of play study where we're trying to understand like how to actually approach competitive play at different levels of play. <laughs> you know, starting with building a part, we, we have our foundation of, we, I have my foundation of how the game should look like. Um, assuming things are going right, which won't happen at, at lower elos. Like, platinum doesn't work like theory. IBS doesn't work like theory. Masters honestly doesn't even work like theory part, part some of the time. Like, there's other subtle differences. And I used to consider the, it, like, fundamentally disrespecting your opponent to not draft, like, as though it's, it's, it's like an optimal circumstance, but come to think of it, it's kind of just accepting reality that there are, like, legitimate trends for how people are misplaying things, right? Or how people approach the game at different levels with how much information they can process. So, so that's what we're doing. We're working on that. Uh, last time we started development on the IBS tier list, like, a top lane thing, a top lane list first. I'm um, just trying to figure out how uh, I how champion power level changes when you're playing an iron bronze silver. Um, and we will be continuing that a little bit, and we'll be continuing in some other roles. But we ran into a problem where I was over theorizing it a little bit, and I was having trouble like refining the lens with specific champions. And I figured, well, every time I over theorize something, the solution is to go run an experiment or to go gather data or something. So my plan is to open by watching some IBS footage from the leagues that were so kind to actually save their VODs somewhere. Because um, <laughs> not all of them do, right? Not all of them do. Uh, we can kind of like r run over what we started with last time, right? And you'll notice a few small changes. So here we are. Uh, I'll put this back up temporarily. This is a first draft of the list. It will change. In fact, the list already has changed since the last time you guys saw this, just in a few subtle little ways, like Darius down, Maokai down, because I'm building my understanding of, like, oh, and it's like York up, Urgot up. Like a, a little s few small changes as I kind of redefined what my tiers mean and I refined my lens. Speaking of, this is the lens, right? When we're playing in iron, bronze, and silver, you're leaning a sloppy, so there's going to be high kill games. The macro is sloppy, so there's going to be long games. So we want lane-dominant champions that snowball, get leads, maintain those leads through multiple throws because they also scale very, very well. If your champion can split push, you're a stronger champion because players are also going to struggle to deal with that, again, because of the aforementioned sloppy macro. We have players who are just learning the game, they're just building up their fundamentals playing at this level, and so they're going to struggle to think beyond the game plans of their own champions. So we want simple comp identities, we don't want complex archetypes, we don't want complex aggros, we definitely don't want any form of controls, we don't even want the most complex teamfight archetypes. We want very simple initiator go in sort of stuff, right? The meta doesn't matter in IBS. You always pick your comfort champions. We know assassins are good, juggernauts are good, like stat check things are good. Certain champions with simpler game plans are better than champions with more complex, more team reliant game plans. Um, so although you should pick comfort and you should always play what you're good at, you also need to keep that in mind. Like hopefully what you're good at is something that is easy for everybody to execute on, right? You want to draft multiple carries because any random lane could collapse. Matchups don't matter, although we have a little asterisk on there now because we realize that if you're a really weak early laner, then it does actually matter that you're not into something that's going to completely stomp you out. Um, because you're not going to be playing optimally safe. Um, and so when you're running something like Nasus, Kale, that sort of champion, um, the matchup does matter a little bit. We, we learned a bit of an asterisk. Champions are held back by a reliance on stability, macro reliance, team reliance, difficulty in team fight execution, being reactive. They're improved by stacking mechanics, aggro anti-engage, pick potential, strong split push, simple team fight, etc. Uh, this was a question I had. Oh, if you're strong early but weak late, do you snap? Yeah, do you still naturally fall off, or is the snowball just extreme? Uh, you should fall off actually, because if you're a tempo-based champion, uh, you will have to endure multiple throws, and tempo-based champions can't do that. In IBS, a champion is considered to fall off if they stop being useful in teamfights as a carry threat due to tempo loss. Um, so something like Renekton, right? Even though Renekton has access to Shoujin now in Season 13, uh, his scaling is still not ideal. He's still fundamentally reliant on getting champ like another champion snowballed, and so eventually, if he throws a few times, which he might, um, we'll encounter problems. <laughs> 
Champions that cannot thrive in the abrupt nature of IBS uh, tend to struggle. So that's something like Gnar who needs some setup time. Uh, champions that are extremely... Yeah, yeah, so this is what we talked about, the matchups. I also learned mechanical prodigies do exist, but you have to be able to rely on some simple abilities or auto attacks if something goes wrong. So we asked at the beginning, at the end of last stream, why is Aurelia up here if it's IBS? Well, because Irelia does win games, right? She's going to stack up a few times. Even if she misses her stun, she still has a strong defensive steroid. She still has the means to just auto you to death with her extra stats. There are Irelia players who can play her reasonably competently at this level. It's not going to be pretty, um, but it's not going to be game losing, right? Whereas compares to that to something like Riven or Akali, who do have like really low win rates uh, statistically in this level of solo queue and who can't really afford any mechanical mistakes at all. I really can't really either, but you know, she's got that cheat. No one's punishing her properly. Okay, what was good in top lane? Uh, stat sticks are great. Split push bullies cause problems. IBS players want to fight. If your win condition is to avoid interaction, uh, that's not happening. Juggernauts and simple carries are good. I was trying to figure out if range tops are too complex or too easy to kill. Um, the spacing's not gonna be great, but they are gonna bully really, really, really hard. Um, so we're also going to, so I, I realized I don't know how the junglers think at this level of play. So we need to figure that out. So that's, that's going to be one of our primary goals while we're watching these games. Um, I have one set from Aegis Squire League, which is the league I'm most familiar with. Uh, although it's uploaded by the Nameless Org, uh, because they were broadcasting one of their own teams. This isn't the official broadcast. And then we have Zero Gravity Gaming, which also puts on an IBS league that I'm aware of. Um, that should be reasonably fine, right? We have a lot of footage to go through here if we wanted to. So, yeah. That's that. Um, I think I think it's worth just jumping right into it and trying to gather some data, because I've only really thought about top lane a bit. I'm starting to wonder if top lane tanks um, are weaker at this level than they should be because most of them are not going to be inherently winning the lane and they're not going to be a carry threat and then it just leaves more risk of another lane collapsing. Um, but of course we need initiators and initi like top lane tanks can often be those initiators. So we'll figure that out. Where did I put Sejuani in the end? I put her in respectable. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll work through that. Is this not? Yeah, of course that's on the wrong page. I forgot to check where all of my windows were. So excuse me, let me open every window on my PC and make sure it's not randomly going to go to the wrong screen. Uh, I don't have anything like bad up right now, but I don't want my Discord being streamed or something like that, you know? Okay, we're good. Uh, let's open with some Z ZGG stuff. And of course, I will put the link to this playlist here um, so that you guys can watch them and support the league. Uh, let's start with the... And the nice thing is, this is regular season. This isn't necessarily going to be the best of the best. I don't even know how well these teams are performing. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be using any copyrighted music at all. So, I mean, let's just skip forward. And we can see first picks are... Oh, what the hell? This is actually kind of like an orthodox draft. Except if you look down at the bands, there's a Zyra band there. There's a um, Alawi band, noticeably. We said that champion would be really strong at this level of play. This is shockingly orthodox. I don't... There's a Leona present. Right. Zekna, how are you doing? Yes, that tier list that we saw the other day was top lane only. And we've just run through like some of the small changes. Just skip forwards a little bit. I can leave the music on, actually, if we're going to play on mute, just in case there's copyrighted stuff here. Boom, Malphite. So, do both teams have, like, really simple team fight? Mordekaiser, of course, shows up all the time. Excellent matchup into the Malphite, but in theory, that shouldn't matter at this level of play. In theory, unless the tanks naturally lose lane. All right. Oh, it's this stupid patch! Do you, do you guys remember, like, 12-15 when this happened and it was just the worst? This is Liz! I, what the fuck? Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm pinging her. Oh. 
Okay, that's funny. That's funny. Anyway, this game just got a lot more interesting to watch now that I actually know one of the mid laners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was we were I was supposed to um Sin Shira the Nico. I was supposed to put her and some of her friends through a different IBS league at one point. I was gonna coach them, but that ended up falling through. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, okay, so what have we got in this game? We can see no regard to any form of damage types. That doesn't matter. We can see, yeah, this full full magic top side on red team. Very simple team fight composition. Aggro anti engage on the Nico as we were talking about. Uh, Mordekaiser is like the king of IBS. Um, both teams have simple initiators. I'm a little bit concerned about blue team because. I mean, on paper, Pantheon, Lux, Caitlyn, that's, like, kind of a tempo core, and that's something that, like, really relies on the snowball with clean execution, like, no no throws. Ah, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm actually going to speed this up a little bit. We're, we're especially going to watch the junglers here, and we're going to try to see how they think, right? Like, are they just over-ganking? Xinjiao has cleared one camp and is going to try to gank. And it works. And he would usually be, like, really, really, really far behind on tempo. And he is. But it might not even matter. Completely random solo kill. Leona, I just noticed, has, um, Ignite Exhaust. Ooh. So already, this is kind of, um, <laughs> this is kind of going as predicted, right? Where the games are just wild all over the place. What is going to happen to Malphite? He is getting clapped. If you look at his HP in top left, he's going to have to deal with the slow push out. Okay, yeah, the junglers are just... We'll, we'll see if this becomes a trend, but the junglers look like they're just friggin' psychotic here. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. Junglers, insane. Spam gankers. Question mark. It could, it could be a trend, but I don't want to say anything yet. How many ignites are in this game? It's only four. Okay. It's not as insane as I thought. How did Pantheon generate that lead or that roam? Okay, he actually did execute a proper roam, like shove roam. He was reconsidering multiple times. Still doesn't know if he's going to go for it. This is one of the catchiest songs on Star Guardian Talia. That broke triangle so hard. Does it matter? Should, surely, right. Doesn't? Doesn't. Does. Really does. <laughs> Um, Diana is farming up a storm. Xinjiao has five camps cleared total. Doesn't matter, though, because he's getting kills. Top lane is a lot more stable than I expected it to be, to be honest. Like, I know Malphite's received some help from Pantheon. And will continue to receive help from Pantheon. Will die. And then maybe trade it back? Oh, no, because W is still available. 
action simultaneously on both sides of the map. I mean, this is actually just a cross map from blue. Okay, I, I wanna I wanna watch how Shinjo actually moves. Like, do they actually have a concept of intentionally cross mapping? Obviously, IBS players aren't stupid, they're just undeveloped on what they know about the game. No, that was always planned, like before Pantheon left. Shinjo's just kind of waiting. Waiting for someone to step up randomly. There was a single invade earlier. That's how Diana died. So this isn't the kind of... I, I mean, the junglers aren't never invading. I'm going to write like a note for myself where it's like, are they invading infrequently? Because again, we're not we're not here to judge if it, whatever they're doing is good or bad. We're here to figure out how they're trying to play the game. Um, because again, my level of play is like 80% mistakes. So we we don't talk about IBS like that. I think I looked away and missed a kill. Yeah, I did. I wonder if it's okay to play Skirmish Aggro. Like, I'm just curious what's going to happen to the blue team as the game goes on. What does a typical throw look like at this elo? Like, what are they gonna do? Just getting caught randomly? Just over pushing? Like, so they feel confident? Maybe I should speed this up a bit, to be honest, so we can, like, get more raw games in, in this period. Right, no, that that's a thing. That's a thing. I forgot. Everyone and their mother is going to flash on you. Like, they'll, the IBS players will never care how many flashes they have to spend to kill you. If they will, if they will spend all five of them. <laughs> oh, so champions with shorter cooldowns should inherently be stronger here because we're going to use our tools really recklessly yeah, yeah, yeah. if we're, if we're going to use our tools really recklessly we don't want to be overly relying on a tool with like an insanely long cooldown that's another hit to shen's power oh oh, 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 oh. tools wasted low cds amazing and i just want to see how this plays out so this this is a liz roam she she does like to do this. Farm is an afterthought to her. She really should be a fucking jungler, but <laughs> but she likes mages too much, and it's just immediately answered by the Pantheon ulti. Yeah, it is right behind. Well, okay, Pantheons. This is kind of like the opposite of our Gnar problem when we think about Pantheon. His scaling isn't nearly as bad as it used to be. It's actually pretty fine as long as you can, like, as long as you can actually kill what you're hitting. Like, not some hyper tank. Um... Dude, the... This album is way too loud and distracting. I am not using this one anymore. I mean, how long is this fall? Okay, so like, one team is going to... It, th this looks like it's probably three, right? Like, 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 it's not going to be just a complete blowout. It is going to be... Three games, ideally. How 
how does blue move when they see this happening? So a fight starts. Literally everybody on the map starts gravitating towards it immediately. Do you see that? Everyone on the map, except the bot lane, who's way too far away, and they're not even thinking about it. Did we- were we missing cooldowns there? I just want to see. Everyone available runs to every fight. I mean, we don't care about having Caitlyn ult in an actual fight. No, I mean, no one's rotating without cooldowns. I don't see, like, Leona shouldn't still be bot late. It doesn't make any sense for her to be here, but. We're not talking about what makes sense. Like, how, how, do, okay. How does an IBS team try to close out their lead? This, this blue team is actually trying to execute Caitlyn's win condition properly, which is cool. So that's proof that, like, if you give them the game plan, they know how to follow it. Like, they've played Caitlyn. They get how she works. Nice. watching how people this leona is really really married to bot lane right now lane assignments do persist longer than they should like in an ordinary game this is still late lane phase but no we're we're we're, we're, we're in an accelerated mid game instead yeah so this is that sloppy macro like they just can't they can't process that lane phase is like they, they don't know what to do because lane phase has ended i'm just i'm waiting for a throw is the throw going to come that's a throw technically but not a big one because there's a cross map available. How long ago were they setting that up? Was Pantheon involved? Like, was this an intentional decision off Pantheon being dead? Actually, it might have been. It actually might have been. Lux is not on the same page, though. See, she didn't commit to either one, yeah. It's like, am I gonna push? No. Am I gonna join top? Guess so. I mean, realistically, I don't think Leona being here changes anything, but she at least dissuades some Xinjiang engage, so. I'm also going to make a note, like, are losing teams relying entirely on throws? Do they try to make things happen? Oh, how often does just group happen? Yeah. Hi, Mel. How are you doing? How often does just group happen? In competitive play here. I'm missing something actually useful. Well, it seems to have absolutely happened here. Where they're like, we're strong, let's just group. <laughs> okay, let's say ram it. Woohoo! Woo! 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 Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but I, I hopefully at least the hungry part can be dealt with, right? 
Again, proof IVS players are not stupid and they can understand simple game plans of their own champions. Diane is actually trying to execute a flank here. Diane is actually trying to get creative. Leona jumps the gun a little bit. Everyone's kind of going in all sorts of directions. Malphite initiates and they're trying. Everyone's trying to follow their initiator, kind of, but like this fight got messy ASAP. Perfect. Glad to hear it. I wish they would zoom out a little bit more. Like I do want to see more of this. Because like when Malphite initiates, Malphite counter engages. Nobody's actually available to follow him right away. But he's just solo killing Varus anyway. It doesn't matter. That's so funny. And as for Leona, she's... Yeah, because again, Diana's not ready. Diana flubs it. Like... I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out if, like, the standard throws are the same at this level as they are, like, around Plot, Diamond. This is IBS. This is Iron, Bronze, Silver that we're watching right now. Hi, Karibo. How are you doing? We're just, we're just building up some notes here. Okay, and surely this game is over, like, shortly, right? I mean, there's still five minutes. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm grouping IBS together because that's typically its own level in amateur play. Like, nobody has specific bronze leagues or specific silver leagues. Like, it's all IBS. So, like, we'll be more specific when it comes to gold. We'll... we'll <laughs> We'll be more specific when it comes to Platinum and to Diamond and to Masters. Um, how did this start randomly? Okay, so like... I mean, that is almost a pick. That is Pantheon just face checking, but he's durable enough with Aegis to survive. <laughs> no, there's not a lot of them, but like everyone in Iron just either. I mean, they just don't have time to devote to the game, or they're like. They're still, they're still stuck on one of the, like, basic skills that need to be picked up. Because, like, some people just come in with advantages because they've had a lot of experience playing games like this before League, right? Hello, Jackie. It's good to see you. Just to catch everyone up, because a lot of people have just joined, um, we're working on our levels of play study. This we, we have our notes about how Iron, Bronze, and Silver play probably work, but while we were building our tier list on the last stream, um, we... Ran into some problems. I was over theorizing. We need to get raw data. Finish the season bronze. Yeah, actually, uh, finish the season low bronze. Like that would that would do it. It's an MMR thing too, right? Okay, so wait, we just experienced our first major throw. It did happen. It did happen. We need to see what happened here. How did blue team throw? They approach Drake. Diana's flanking. Shinjiao walks up too foot close, just randomly. Get Womboed. I mean, it's just as simple as that, huh? Ouch. Feels bad. 
Okay, no, it literally just is. Like, look where everyone is on the map. Malphite's not close. They're setting up as though Malphite's here. They're like, yo, guys, come on, let's group, let's group dragon, right? So which catch tools did they use? They used Diana Flanks. They used, for some reason, Mordekaiser E is a valid catch tool here. Where's Leona ultimate? gets thrown in there somewhere. Okay, I was thinking about this incorrectly, I think. This is not a game with split push champions in it. So I guess in that situation, like, you're just catching people right before the fight, random picks. Cause I was envisioning like high pick potential is just, oh, go swarm a side lane and you know somebody's in an inappropriate spot and there's no response or something I guess that's what weakens Garen, technically, because he can't do that. AoE probably does, actually. Although I would imagine what happens immediately after this is just blue team is still too far ahead and they just take another fight and it's as simple as that, right? Like, a ram it. They're like, uh-oh, guys, we weren't groups. Let's group. Look. Look, 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 look. Again, the problem with IBS players isn't necessarily their hands. Don't talk down to them completely. Everyone can learn. And yeah, just out of sync, Leona. Just... Okay, so, I mean, I'm... I mean, if you give a... That's, that's one of the missing pieces. That's one of the missing pieces that we had at this level. <sighs> okay, jump forward to draft of game two, and we'll see what they start prioritizing. And it's always going to be comfort, right? Something's going wrong here. Okay, there we go. <laughs> kind of based. Okay, how simple is this? It's like... I definitely... I definitely wouldn't call this a team fight composition. Or, or it's like almost one. It's almost one, but Pantheon's kind of off theme. Um, unless I'm misunderstanding Pantheon. I, let me just think about what this truly is, right? You're... You're using an out-of-archetype Xinjiao, but he does actually have some enchanter support, which is funny. I mean, just using Pantheon as comfort, catch potential. Again, magic, like, damage spread is not a question. And it will not go punished. Xinjiao is a pseudo-tank. Can we count him as our initiator? Can we count Xinjiao as our initiator? Unless we're counting Scion as our initiator? Like, he kind of is one. Kind of. I don't know. Let's see.
Because, yeah, if you're, if, you're, if you're going through archetype theory alone, what the fuck is Viego doing here? Completely random catch. I see. Everyone is dead. I think... I think we might have to approach scaling from a different perspective. Like... Sorry, I have a lot of really incohesive thoughts right now. Like... I'm just gonna kind of let this footage play and like let my brain start to adapt a bit to what's going on. Hell yeah, we've solved the hungry part. This is fucking maniacal. Look at this. They actually are attempting a turret dive. They're actually attempting a turret dive. That's not what I expected to see. Scion as a relatively weak early laner is struggling. Viego is a strong early skirmisher. He's... I bet Blitzcrank is probably one of the best supports at this level, right? <sighs> Noticeably, the junglers are not necessarily overganking. I mean, they're absolutely trying to force completely nonsensical ganks, and they're just showing themselves randomly. There's no Herald focus for the Shinjao there. Okay, any Iron, Silver, or Bronze players in our chat? Do people just scream for dragons and not think about Heralds? Okay, IBS players do go for turret dives. They just don't know how to do it. Makes sense. Herald's a very tempo-oriented objective. It's, it's hard to kind of appreciate its value, but people have been conditioned to know, ooh, Dragon Soul, big objective, you win. We haven't seen Pantheon get super, super active on the map this time. The Seraphine CS is just a Liz thing. Like, that's not. <laughs> okay, so yeah, they... When was this Herald call made? Viego just decided to do it because he had push. Okay, it's like macro is sloppy, but it's not like completely 100% misguided. Right? Because like these players are making plays that like can, you can argue they make sense, right? Some of these plays are completely reasonable. Right? I, I said some. <laughs> Uh, it's a work in progress. You haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> it's st still IBS. No, let's look. Look, watch this. This is this is just the trend that defines this level of play, right? 
A fight breaks out. Watch everybody on the map who's remotely close to it. Scion moving. Seraphine moving. Blitzcrank moving. Lilia moving. Despite crashing wave. No one valuing their own resources at all. Hey, nice to see you, Lilia. <laughs> she would be if she had farm. <laughs> yeah, you see, by random chance, the game we have chosen is like features our good friend Liz Akita in the mid lane, and uh, she has a tendency to never see us. Ever. <laughs> and we've said to her before, just fucking jungle, please. Like, either jungle or support or, like, play some CS drills or anything. Okay, who initiated this invade? Was this just the bot lane? Just the bot lane. I'm trying to fight things. Fight breaks out, everyone moving. Yep. Okay, so mid laners. Mid laners, we're going to be valuing roam potential. We're going to be valuing catch. Um, you would. You would be. You would try to pick a scaling control mage for team fights, and then you'd probably find yourself getting clapped by like Fizz or Zed randomly. Or Pantheon. Okay. I literally just wrote in my notes, players do try to dive, and then I see that on my screen. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yes, because I, I, I made the incorrect guess that players would never try to tower dive at this level. I, I was wrong. I was just straight up wrong. They do go for it. But, like, not well executed at all. Unless it's, like, a small thing like that. I mean, that Lily actually played it pretty nicely. But... Fight breaking out randomly. Somebody gets caught, but, like, unfortunately, you're just too strong. Xinjiao is losing this duel. It's Xinjiao that gets caught. And then it looks like they're turning it because teammates are nearer, but... So fucking random. Okay, I really, really, really desperately need to see a team try to play around a top lane split pusher. I need to see it. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm sure eventually somebody in these games... I mean, we have like six... We have like seven series that we could watch tonight. Seven sets. Okay, and it's... They just... They just keep fighting. They just keep fighting. Which champ is this, Mel? 
NASA stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we kind of rated him a little lower than I expected to in our list because he's he is one of those champions that would collapse if you're against, like, really... Re like, true. I'd imagine Mordekaiser Nasus probably just doesn't go in Nasus's way. Like, he'll eventually be a problem, but we've seen two complete blowouts so far. The eventuality is not that scary if the games just tend to play out. Like, I... I don't think I've ever seen a silver game that doesn't have, like, 20 kills at 10 minutes. Obviously a bit of an exaggeration, but, like, look, look what's happening around the map! It's completely spontaneous. People actually are now getting caught out and picked before anything major happens. Well, t typically you'd ha I mean, it's it's way too far gone for red team at this point. They're 10,000 gold down. There's really nothing they can do except pray that the blue team throws. Um, but, but yeah, before before you get to this point, you're supposed to bleed out like a little bit. You try to stem the bleeding. You do everything in your power to slow the game pace usually. And then if it does get desperate, you can look to trade cross map. I mean, they're not going to think about the macro plays at this level of play. Um, But you can try to trade cross map. It was like the three C's. What were the three C's? Was it three C's? Because it was like cross map. Maybe it wasn't C's at all. I'm trying to remember. I had a good thing going with my plays from behind at some point. Exactly. Yeah, there we go. That's how you play from behind. Crotch, cranium, center mass. Nah, Blitzcrank has to be broken in silver, bronze. Like... Where is the throw in this game? Oh, it's... Oops. I didn't mean to actually click it. We have a Baron. It would probably be faster for me to let the footage roll. <laughs> what do we want from our 80 carries? Well, don't, don't get too overwhelmed, Mel, because there's a lot of stuff that won't be relevant for you right away. I'm going to try to organize it a little better, but... Like, like study the champion pages for the champions that matter to you, but... Not yet. No, 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 no. I'm not challenger myself yet. One day I will be, but right now I'm not, so... There was no throw. It just got closed out cleanly. Well, cleanly, but. So here's a Garen who appears. There's a Kaisa. There's a Samira again. Zyra Samira is an odd combo, especially when the Zyra runs flashless. Huh. Pantheon again. Shinjao again. Here's Garen. Mordekaiser again. Kaisa brand. Like just these really fucking aggro champions. For Garen, probably not, but our theory is that matchups don't matter, right? <laughs> Double mage support. So mid, we do value some setup here. There's a pause. Yeah, but the other side is a Samira Zyra, which is not an orthodox duo at all. It's kind of odd. This is that usual spectator bug, and the observers don't really know about it, I think. They're confused. There we go. That happens after almost every pause. I mean... Does a Silver Garen have to play that cleanly, though? Look, he's just... Oh, well... Oh, kind of an even trade. 
<laughs> oh, I know how you feel. I'm really starting to take an aggro slant to this, like... Fortunately, this one did. This is the slowest game I've seen so far. The junglers have just- oh, never mind. Here comes a gank. Wait, did that- No, what am I saying? It's, of course, second clear. No, wait, it's not. Wait, what the- Guys, what the hell is Xin Jiao been doing? Hang on, hang on. <gasps> We're watching the map. Something weird is going on. Viego ganks without his red buff there after four camp. Xin Jiao, who skips the red, gets confused, goes straight to crab, because there's no counter gank to be had. Viego is sitting there trying to re-gank with Seraphine, but nothing is happening. Shinja was considering ganking that, but he realized he would just get... Viego's still waiting! Shinjo's trying to dive! Oh my god, they actually... Viego didn't even take Top Crab! Okay, these junglers are fucking psychopaths. They're absolutely just trying to gank. That's 100% what's on their mind. Sean, that's all I have to, and anyone who knows Trash King, or has like watched, like I, 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 I talk to Sean all the fucking time. I watch him play League often. It's just, it's just ganks. Like that's, that's how they think. That's actually how the junglers think. It's just, I had an example right there. Like, it makes sense. It's, it's, it's generally true. It, it is it is true in every level where mistakes are going to happen um where if you just if you just fight and you catch someone off guard and you surprise them and you kill them you're gonna snowball like this this game on paper doesn't favor aggro it really doesn't but in practice it does and I'm seeing now that's actually really true for silver as well where you're expecting to have a bajillion kills instantly this is the slowest silver game we've seen it's just because the junglers couldn't find anything oh the junglers found something with a support roam that's a flash but that's just a flash too like that's okay now how addicted to dragon are they are they going to start it from here I would imagine the the more stat checky your champion is, the harder it is to lose your good matchups. Maybe the I'm even thinking back to the um, Team Ambition Challenger showcase that I was hosting the other day, where even even when like the lowest ranked player in the lobby is Grandmaster 600 LP, the aggro comps just flourished. Because people were people are gonna be playing fast and loose like a little bit, or it, it's an environment where these are very very highly skilled players, but it's effectively solo queue because they can talk to each other, but they're not used to playing with each other. Because they're not used to playing with each other, they don't have systems for defending against weird macro plays. Like they don't have calm structures or anything. They don't have any responsibilities or like one guy's just tracking and like trying. That's at least what I think is happening here. So yeah, even when everyone is like on average challenger 900, the more aggressive comp was favored. By the way, I talked to you guys about that, right? That was the coolest thing that would happen to me. Like there's a, there's a, there was a show, a set of show matches where like everyone is challenger and they like Victorious explicitly wanted me for their cast. Like 
It was awesome. That was in disorganized play? Not really. Everyone was in comms. It was a bunch of challenger players in comms. They just weren't, it was just their first time playing together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, think about when you're watching LCS, LCK, Worlds, like any of the actual top leagues. So, um, how many ch people try to get away with running like Cinder Lee Sin or something? How many people just go for like this aggro combo and try to snowball with it? Oh, hell yeah, you do. I mean, the, the, the tone of the night was defined by just really early Samira picks and stuff. What's happening here? Inappropriate drag. Is this, this is an inappropriate dragon start. Look at the complete lack of prio. But Viego is topside. No, it's not inappropriate at all. It's just messy because Pantheon's not here and their waves aren't set up properly. I'm not paying attention to the minutiae right now, if I'm being honest. I'm just... I'm just trying to gather trends here. Well, yeah, it depends. You have some players who just get like really up their own ass because they're the best and you, you do get some players that are still very humble and those are excellent teammates. Right. Jung junglers will waste all of their time trying to gank. They really will. It's totally fine to think about it in football terms. Although, I will say, I will say, Jackie, one of my teammates tends to think in football terms too, and that bothers him when he has to give stuff up because there's not really a concept of just making concessions in football. Because, you know, the enemy team doesn't just become stronger in football. <laughs> We had a dangerous TP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, 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 look. The Seraphine TP. She's fucked. Oh, I was really late, too. <sighs> well, even if you're not like, okay, let's look at let's look at Blabber in pro play, right? Blabber's not a showboat. He doesn't have a big ego, but like he's going to take the aggro play and try to skill check you at top level and when c9 has a team that is designed to enable that they look so much better i'm thinking back to the olaf soraka that they ran during the very limited ls coach days this is actually a very even game despite the kills Because you're not just going to, like, instant... It, it's hard to change mindset. You're not going to instantly change mindset just because you're in a team environment. You have to develop that over time. You have to want to develop it. Oh, we have a dragon. Uh, five people versus five people just pacing around. Neither of these champions are inherently going for flanks. Red's just fishing for a Seraphine ult. No one on blue has thought to go... Oh, there's the Seraphine ult. That is a really weird outcome. <laughs> Nobody on blue thought to go like push mid wave and generate pressure or something. It's just, it's the fight. They're ready for the fight, right?
I would imagine your chances of success are still higher if you follow archetype theory, but draft like really aggro laners. I'll have to test that with my own IBS squad. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's why we try to get, that, that's why I push for amateur play, to be honest. That's why I really want more people playing Clash and taking it seriously and not quitting, and why I want people, like, actually trying to sign up for amateur leagues. And... Because here's the thing, solo queue is really, really good as a practice environment, but it fucking sucks as the actual way to play the game. Solo queue is excellent for developing your skills. But like it has, it can't, it can't be the reward. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We do actually have a sit split push side lane situation. Hang on, hang on. They're gonna struggle to deal with Mordekaiser. They're like, we have to answer this guy. What are we gonna do? How? What does his team do? Does his team actually use the macro pressure of Mordekaiser? I think they do. Not quite. They were posturing around the Baron. Now they will. Okay. Good. Wow, my expectations were low. <laughs> Zyra? She's not dead somehow. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. I'm thinking back to some games I played yesterday. Um, IBS players get really stressed when someone's close to their turrets. They don't have an idea of race conditions. <laughs> True. I mean, no, that, that screams set play to me. That really, that, Jade, that really does scream set play. Like, I, I, I think... That's a very simple game plan that I think anyone could understand. And it's not like hard to keep track of the concept of when my split pusher gets attacked by four people rush baron. Like I've heard I've heard you guys make those calls before, now that I think about it. And you're not monkeys with typewriters, you're monkeys with keyboards. <laughs> Yeah, it, it has. And when I was this low on the ladder, I certainly didn't think about the game properly. So I didn't really have a concept of how far I've come. Like, exactly, yep. I was talking about this the other day with a friend. It's like silver players might actually be like diamond in season one, modern silver players. Aw, oh, rip double camping. Do you do you know what else? I, I've noticed talking to like gold players too. Um People in gold and below really struggle with the concept of like Econ. They just go for really greedy builds because they're going to get a shit ton of gold every game. Everyone's fighting. Everyone's getting kills. I remember talking to Becky Rita a few months ago, and he was like, yeah, I don't know why. I have a Bork Nocturne build that's just feeling really good, and I don't understand why it's feeling good. And I'm like, yeah, that doesn't sound very good. What, what's up? And as it turns out, it felt good because, oh, of course, he's fighting everything that moves. He's getting much more income than he should have, and he's getting to the point where it's like, yeah, I can have Bork Stride tank item, and that detour isn't being, it's, it's not punishable. Like, everyone's going to have a gold for it. Now, yeah, we can argue that blue team does have an initiator because it, it, it seems that globals and like pseudo tanks like Xinjiao do count as initiation for these. Facts. <laughs> I, 
I think red is actually really struggling because they have very limited ways to make a catch. Yeah, look at their comp. This violates one of our principles of you must have an initiator at IBS. So they're only able to win fights through, like, random catches. And, and their Seraphine is somehow starting fights. Oh, okay. Yep. I don't think they're going to give up this Drake. I think they're still going to fight over it. Seraphine initiation. Okay. Yeah, it's the mispositioning. It's just like how Mordekaiser E was a legitimate catch tool. Okay, so the throws are less one person gets caught out and then things eventually spiral. It's more a fight breaks out, we trade like four for three and really stunt our tempo. And everyone's getting fed, even if they had a bad early game. It is so fundamentally teamfight oriented, but like not with teamfight champions. Okay. <sighs> All right, which one do you guys want to watch? Do you guys want to watch like another ZGG one? Do you guys want to watch this Aegis Squire League one? That's actually... Mm. Well, what's going on here? We have Mordekaiser, we have Olaf. I, I'm trying to find... No, no, let's... I'm going to make an executive decision to try to find a split pusher. I have to know... I, I mean, I... So, the the thing is... The thing is, Mel... Um, I fund... Like, if I were to draft at full theory for silver, they would lose every time. It's not how the game works down there. So I need to properly understand it. And if I don't, then I will not be able to help people properly. And I will feel like I'm fundamentally disrespecting my opponents by picking certain things. So I need a lens to tell me, no, you're not fundamentally disrespecting. This is double tank here. This is... Trinomir! Ooh, perfect, 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 perfect. Yes, that's what we were looking for. Trinomir! And the game opens with Pike having already flashed, um, and Misfortune having already flashed. <laughs> you guys played in fucking... What was it called back then? It was like a le it was still called Legends back then, I think. But nowadays it's the VAS, which was a completely inappropriate league for me to enter you guys into. Completely wrong. That's entering IBS into a gold league. That is fundamentally not okay. Like, that was just setting you guys up for failure for no good reason. Hang on, what the hell is happening here? Trudemir just decides. Because he sees on vision, he's like, my wave's not crashed, I don't care. Fight, 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 go away, idiot. Loses the fight. Walks back to lane, Giga Chad. No, he's going back in to fight again. But Shinjiao's Shin ganking. Shinjiao's ganking with 4CS. 
four. Yeah, no, I did very bad things to your confidence, and I'm sorry about that. That was not okay for me to do. Uh, guys? Production? Hello? Production? Just close it! Like... <laughs> Anyway, Gwen has 24 CS and Xin has 10. Uh, Gwen is not the type of jungler I would expect to see at this level, so I really just want to see what she's doing. Oh, she's just counter jungling like a maniac because Xin not farming anything. Oh, that was the split where your mid laner just dipped. Yeah, I remember now. I'm frankly kind of shocked to see Rise here, but... <sighs> Maybe they'll surprise me. to skip just to the end so I can see Trendomir because I still do want to see- Look at Shin Zhao's items! <laughs> he had just a refillable pot because the smite upgraded. Are you kidding me? <laughs> he hadn't faced. I could probably go back and find the old docs and find out who was on that team. Oh yeah, if anyone in chat wants an opportunity to play in some amateur leagues, um, hit me up. We can try to put a team together. The leagues are starting up in like mid-January, and I do have systems in place to help people um, break into the amateur scene. Very slow game. Okay, so these slow games do happen. What? Hell yeah, Mel. That sounds like fun. Again, don't... Totally fine. Don't push yourselves to do more than you can do, right? Gank machine. Gwen, like, double the resources. Gwen hasn't shown her face in the lane once. I forgot to share the stupidest thing that happened to me. Okay, so... I'm gonna let this footage play while we're just talking about it. Stupidest thing that happened to me lately. Um, last night, I had a dream. And in this dream, I was literally just practicing my mindset in League. I'm thinking lately when I'm awake, oh my gosh, I'm struggling to process information. When am I going to pro- like, how am I going to improve my information intake? So I literally, in my dream, worked out how to use downtime properly, refined the concept of downtime to myself, practiced it a little bit, and I woke up, I'm like, huh? Why? What? Did I just practice in my sleep? I went to go play a game, like just a norm with some friends, and my summoner spell tracking was insane. I legitimately improved in my sleep. <laughs> I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What's Gwen doing on her first like major play? Harold getting caught, dies. Okay. <laughs> Q 
purifying and sorting it. I'm just so surprised that it was like an actual tangible dream where I can remember working on my skills. Well, that was atrocious pathing. Lucky, lucky. Back in like 2015, I tried to develop my lucid dreaming and it never happened. I was just getting poor quality sleep. <sighs> I haven't journaled in years now. I probably should start again. Okay, so like the way I see it, this Gwen, this Gwen was really high risk. Um, if this Gwen had been an at all a less stable game, I don't think she would have been able to keep up the Xinjiao. But as it stands, this counter jungling is creating a pretty insane individual. Oh my god, is that really how we're playing? What? And it worked? Kind of? Just walk up, die, refuse to elaborate, team gets a double kill. You guys saw what I just saw, right? Watch Misfortune. Watch Misfortune. Watch her reaction to the Malphite ult. Are you ready? Are you ready? Watch Misfortune's reaction to the Malphite ult. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. You got your fingers backwards. It's okay, I worked out for them. It was our flash to just instantly cancel her own ultimate without doing any damage. <laughs> That's a noob. I know it's IBS. I don't want to make fun of anybody. I just, when something funny happens, I can't help but point it out. I don't want to flame these players. Everyone makes mistakes. But holy shit. <laughs> okay. Um... Okay, so the split push has fully begun now. Uh, Trinomir is just going completely unanswered as Malphite is, like, trying to group with his team. Red team ends up getting the dragon. Trinomir is just soloing everything that moves. Oh, we've seen this playstyle before. Ah, it's this type of top laner. I'm just shocked by how stable this game is. Like, this is a low kill game where the Rise and Gwen can actually do something. There's the very simple combo that they're looking for. <laughs> well, you know that thing I said about stability? Yeah, meanwhile, Trindamir. Trin was proxy farming. And I will point out how do teams play around their split pushers? Uh, frankly, kind of poorly. At least this team is. 
because Trindamir and Rise are both in the side lane, yet they're still contesting some stuff. Caitlyn's dead. These two are still contesting. Gwen just straight up tries to fight everybody, which makes no sense. But then it's like Malphite straight up uses his TP to try to save a turret that he would never save. Yorick and Duo Q. I have Yorick like. I have Yorick up here right now. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this again afterwards. Okay, so like let's say let's say we're an IBS team and our jungler plays like Evelyn or something. <sighs> oh wait, Yorick's warp factor and how he changes the game is actually something that would be a problem for low elo players, right? Hang on, no, you guys might be right. You guys might be right because I'm. Uh, don't forget, for me, every tier on a tier list has to have a definition for champions to properly fit into it. Uh, the oppressive tier that I have, um, if the regular oppressive on a normal tier list is overwhelming game warping output. If output is sufficiently high, input does not factor. Because again, I'm using my IOG system to categorize things. The iron bronze silver lens says game warping output must occur through the lens of the ELO. Um, which would be like really disgusting macro team fighting sort of stuff, like overtly stat checking things, um, or just fundamentally changing how the game works in a way that they can't handle. Uh, maybe you guys are right. Flash <laughs> doesn't matter. Bye bye. Uh, what's happening here? Where is everybody? Trindamir is just, Trindamir just starts pushing whatever he can get. His team decides it's like, oh wait a minute, that Trindamir push looks good. They're gonna start taking it over. Trindamir is now trying to get to somewhere else. Decides he can't. Is now grouping. They're just pushing. And here's the typical random fight. Which isn't really random because, like, obviously Red Team needs to respond. They just flub it catastrophically. Um, and so, the Trinimer team wins in, like, 23 minutes. But still, the victory came out of, like, literally nowhere. This is unironically like a decent answer to a team oversetting up on a Drake, but like without Pryo, like this is actually is not a bad answer. Malphite just commits his ultimate before anybody shows up. Guys. Yeah, I'm surprised. This is a very different game. Um, okay, yeah, we. I mean, we see the power of this type of top laner, right? The regular split pushers and Okay, so what we learned right away is these, these games are fundamentally a lot more aggro a lot like aggro based than I expected to see. Um we like low cooldowns. Cause we're wasting tools. Let's go back to this for a moment. And I'll throw this back up. Okay, boop. Okay, so... The oppressive champions are here for an obvious reason, because they're gigantic stat checkers who fundamentally change, like, how things work, and they just require more specific answers, and they can be hard to deal with at this level. The dominant champions are also just going to giga stat check you and, like, try to make the game about themselves, um, but they're not, like, highly warping. Set, of course, just... We've seen what he does at this level. Malphite is the only tank here. Why is he the only tank? I think... The your 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 tanks actually no there's there's a game that occurred right before this right that's double tank we're gonna skip ahead 
Um, we're going to skip ahead to like some mid-game stuff where the tanks are actually getting themselves involved. Ooh, we've got a champion pool redeem. That's exciting. We'll do it after this in just a moment. Uh, Jackie, I'm just going to need to know what your favorite champion is and your main role, and then we can work from there. Because we, we've got to build the pool, like, around a champion that you already kind of play. Right. Oh. Guys, this isn't a tank versus tank game at all. Guys, this is not a tank versus tank game. <laughs> hole breaker scion it is it is fun i get it oh it's just a split pusher again okay. i need to find like tank versus tank okay so yeah let's let's try to find some tank versus tank And then if we can, this is Orn, Orn Alawi Ward. Kind of cool, but. The Nautilus and, oops, forgot. Uh, Aatrox Sejuani, close, but not quite. I'm just staring at this before I'm processing that it's Camille Mordekaiser. Did you guys like lose the VOD or what happened here? Okay, some something happened on their stream, I guess. All right, this game is. I don't know what I'm looking at, but casters 1v1 on ARAM. This is Nar Trindamir, not what we're looking for. This is Kale Cho'Gath. Jesus Christ, what happened in draft to allow this to happen? <laughs> did they just, like, how hard did they force this? Yeah, just greed, greed. Okay, cool. Um, uh, okay. Let's build a champion pool for Jackie. Let's do that one. Okay, we have, we have to build a jung champion pool for a jungler. We have a jungle player. Um, jungle, jungle, jungle player. So this, I have to think about this for a moment because I haven't done this yet. Oh, I still have my first draft stuff. I haven't done this yet for jungle. Uh, usually when I'm talking to bot lane players, I try to get them to, like to figure out some uh way to establish an identity as a player that also covers the three core types of bot lanes uh when i'm talking to a mid laner or a top laner again we're trying to build around a specific champion and we're trying to establish an identity but we're also trying to cover some various matchups and stuff um what do we need for jungle what do we need in a solo queue pool to play jungle um, ultimately not too much, right? We, we don't need a lot of, like, different things. We, we, we probably just need to be able to cover some, like, really doomed damage type situations. Um. We need to be able to cover absolutely doomed damage situations. So, like, if your team is full physical, you can't just pick your other physical champion. If your team is full magic, you can't just pick your magic champion. Um, we do still want to establish like a specific style of play. Um, 
Would that be like carnivore, omnivore, herbivore, like lean into one or? So your champions are similar? Mostly run into Vi's and Volley Bear eats them. <laughs> yeah, Vi is kind of a funny champion. Very single purpose. Ooh. Sorry, Mel. You have problems with going against magic champions. Yeah, so I, I apologize, Jackie. Like, whatever solution we come up with is not going to be perfect because my methods for building a jungle pool are not completely developed yet. Um, but we can at least start to figure something out, right? We can at least... We can at least work at that. Um, you play Volley Bear, you play a Moo Moo. You're struggling with magic champions. Why would we be struggling against magic champions if we're playing a volley bear? If we're playing a volley bear, what's the actual issue here? So I'm just gathering some information. Okay, so Volibear's a champion that does, like, a pretty reasonable spread of physical and magic damage, and, like, you can always transition more into the magic damage element. A Mumu is going to be dealing predominantly magic damage. Um... It's an interesting... Ah, fuck, what do we actually need to build out a pool? <laughs> First of all, the thing I need to emphasize is that we are only going to be trying to play like three champions if we're trying to climb in solo queue, right? Three champions tops. Ideally one or two, like. And the reason we do that is because the more you focus on one thing at a time, the easier it is to solve the specific problems that you're having. Because you're not flip-flopping between a bunch of different types of issues, right? So if we're going to play multiple champions for when, like, if, if we're using, say, Volley Bear as our baseline, we want to play champions who's, who would be similar enough to Volley Bear. And that's a champion where you're fundamentally trying to gank early, take duels, have the means to, like, force your team to enter fights, right? Kind of. I mean, I know that's not a perfect description of Volley Bear. I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking for your elo range, like, generally what you're accomplishing as Volley Bear. So, like, I, I, I guess in that sense, Volley Bear and Amumu kind of are complementary. Um, Vol Volley Bear would thrive a lot more with a second frontliner on his team, but like uh, at, at the like if you're trying to directly team fight with this champion. Uh, but on the other hand, he's giving you a lot more direct agency over how the game plays out. You can take more duels, you can take more dives, stuff like that. Okay, so you do have a strong preference for high durability. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. I mean, frankly, I, I, I think you can kind of just keep doing what you're doing. Like, if you're playing these two champions as your core, I can't see what problems that would cause at your level of play right now. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to run through some juggernauts in my head. Like juggernauts. I, I I'm I'm thinking, I mean Darius is an option. I I I'm thinking predominantly of a physical option. Because it's like This champion's all magic damage. This champion is like a big chunk magic damage, although the spread is a lot different than I expected it to be. We want to be in the front lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a short about Darius out right now. Um, I think Darius is like really... I, I, I think he's secretly... Like, he's, he's the best kept secret right now. His solo queue win rate is poor. That's the thing, though. His solo queue win rate is poor. Um... But his clear speed is one of the fastest in the game. 
And if you're setting him up with, like, any mid laner who provides any sort of utility, the game becomes so much easier. Um, I'm wondering if that's a little too coordination dependent to recommend for solo queue, though. I've been playing him a lot. I think he's pretty good. Like, I low-key think he's a top 10 jungler in the game. But we're not recommending based on power levels, because power levels don't matter in the elo that you're going to be playing with. Um, we need to find something comfortable for you. Fuck, what does a jungle pool need? Ah! Ah! <laughs> I've never thought about this question before. What am I doing? I think I have it in the channel point redeem that, like, I'm obviously going to be better at doing this for bot lanes. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um... I mean, hmm. Let me just pull up a list that you guys won't be able to see. Jarvan's not really a duelist, but he would be a good physical option for you if you like the frontline kind of initiator sort of thing. Um, I'm trying to find duelists. I'm trying to find people who... Oh, we could... I mean, maybe we could work on Trundle, but you're not going to be as tanky. I mean, Jackie, would you prefer, like, initiating for your team and playing the team game, or do you want to really be able to take, like, fights and small skirmishes and, like, win with your own damage? Like, what's what's most comfortable for you? How do, how do you play a Mumu? Are you typically, like, terrible at Trundle? How, how do you typically play a Mumu? Are you going, like, full tank? Are you incorporating a bunch of magic damage in your build? Like, I'm just trying to get a feel for your preferences and your playstyle. microwave it's, it's very funny i used to run like there, there was a period where i was just straight running everfrost magi as a mumu support <laughs> you play relatively defensively take the long one-on-one -on -one skirmishes okay now i'm, now I'm even more confused about the mumu and pool <laughs> So you really, you, you really like the counter engage. You really like, I would assume, I'm just going to make some assumptions here and I want you to call out if something feels wrong. Um, you typically like playing counter engage. You like being able to kind of relax, clear your jungle, um, find plays as they come rather than hard forcing them. Hmm. This is definitely a little different. Whoops. Okay. Definitely a little different than I thought because, like, I, I definitely see how you're playing Volley Bear that way. So we want a pick to complement... We want to pick that kind of rewards you for playing that way more. Something that's going to allow you to fight things, but that's going to allow you to frontline for your team. I mean, I assume I assume that means you're... Mm. There's a solution here. I'm something is forming in my brain. Just give me a moment to figure it out. So one of these champions is going to pop out soon. Very soon. Ah! Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay. Jackie, here's the deal. 
you play your Volibear is a fundamentally aggressive champion. Um while you're not going to experience problems early in your career playing Volibear, eventually, if you keep playing a purely defensive game, you're going to start to encounter problems. Eventually. Like, around, probably around Platinum or something. Um, Amumu is a champion who really needs to survive the early game in the jungle, but then, like, has the means to just get fights started, right? Basically, what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to find a... We, we want to round out your pool in such a way... I'm, I, mean, I have, like, so many fucking fidget things these days, like my capo and my stress star. I just noticed I'm playing with them both and my pencil. Like, what's going on with me? <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm trying to pick a third champion for your pool that can be more physical-leaning than these two, that does have a lot of means to play defensively, but that, just like the other two, is going to be really incentivized to help you develop your skills at pushing things forwards. Um, because we want to be a good initiator when we're playing a Mumu, not just counter-engage, even though we can. We want to be a good diver and a good initiator with Volibear, even though we're really punishing stuff. My solution was Poppy. That's actually my solution, because we also want it to be a relative frontliner. I think Poppy's our answer. Because, yeah, you can play for some a lot of defensive value on Poppy. But then eventually you're going to run into a similar problem with Poppy. It's not going to be... It's going to be similar to the Volibear. It's going to be similar to the Amumu, where you're like, hmm, just playing this way isn't cutting it for me anymore. Oh, fortunately, this champion plays similarly enough to my other two that, like, I'm going to... I'm going to learn how to get some more flank initiations off. I think I think having a core of Volibear, Amumu, Poppy, three simple champions, three relatively similar champions can do the things you like, and they will all progress the same learning goals long term. And you can cover any type of magic situ any type of damage situation. Poppy physical, Volibear hybrid, Amumu magic. So yeah, take Poppy to the jungle, and there you go. That might do it for you. <laughs> So I'm sorry this wasn't like formalized or anything, but I think we have figured some stuff out and it's at least a real plan. Okay. <sighs> Let's breathe. <laughs> no problem, glad I could help. Let's go back to this. Um. I have raided tanks. We were still looking for a pure tank game. We were not finding one. We might not find one. This has Ken in it. This one has... Oh, Shen Gragas. This actually could be what we're looking for. What's happening now? Zeknol, we just redeemed a champion pool build thing, and now I'm just explicitly looking for, like, tank versus tank matchups in IBS level. Um, because I want to prove or disprove that a lack of early laning power could be problematic. Red Team! Red Team has a comp that I would never recommend for IBS level play. This is, like, literally a one carry comp. I mean, 1.5. Like, may maybe you were treating Shivana as a carry. But, like... This is devastating. This is really, really high risk. Especially, like, Caitlyn melee pl pl versus Heimerdinger melee. Heimerdinger ranged, actually. It's like... Or maybe we want tank versus non-tank. Oh, do we want tank versus non-tank? Is that actually what we were looking for the whole time? I just realized tank versus tank doesn't help me with studying this hypothesis. Well, We're probably looking for tank versus non-tank, actually. But it can't be that Kale game we found earlier. This is Graves Cannon. Alright, back to all the friggin' VODs again. <laughs> this is this is the Cho'Gath Kale. That's not the one we wanted. Well, 
Well, I'm looking for... Okay, so... How am I, how am I going to explain this point? Um... Shen is a stat check champion. He will stat check you, but not to the degree of like the proper stat checkers. Like the actual juggernauts, the actual early bully carries. So basically what I'm trying to figure out, if Shen is a champion who's not inherently going to win lane, or if we're playing something less extreme, right, because Shen's a weird niche case. If we're playing something less extreme, like we're playing more conventional tanks like Orn, Malphite, um, Sejuani, eh, Sejuani's high damage, never mind, not that one. But like, if we're playing, if we were playing these more conventional scaling tanks, does that become a humongous problem in the context of IBS? Like, where we've discovered how critical early laning power is at this level of play. Um, are we going to have problems relying on top lane tanks? This is the Scion Orn. I mean, so far we've seen Malphite just have so much success, like, because it literally doesn't matter what happens to him in lane. Like, Malphite's a special case. This is, Mal this is Malphite Mord. We watched this game in full. Um, the Malphite did take it. Because he endured the lane really effectively. We watched this whole series. This was Lilia Scion, and Scion did get absolutely clapped, and it wasn't close. And it was proper pure tank Scion, and he didn't end up contributing too, too much to his team. I mean, Lilia is also not even the one who took over. This is Juggernaut Juggernaut. This game never got played on this stream. This is Camille Mord. Uh, this is such this is Sejuani Aatrox. Although I'm just gonna double check like the other two games. Alawi Orn. Uh, Alawi Orn. I I don't know. Any anything could have happened. Okay, in this game, Orn just got a serious, serious CS deficit. Um, I'm actually remembering a ton of Shen games with my silver friends where like they, they went down like 60 CS. It wasn't pretty. I don't mind Fimble, but I don't like the tempo loss it gives you in this season. There's a Draven mid in this game. Orn never got to participate before anything happened here. Like, Macro? Yeah, I've never, like, listened to Macro's full argument there. I know he was against Fimble, like, a long time before Fimble fell off. Um, so he definitely was ahead of the curve on that one. Kind of comes off as like... I mean, it doesn't get multiplied as hard as some of the resistance items, right? Oh, he's the dude that's like been tweeting out anti-heart seal stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, he's based. Never mind. No, nah, he's based as fuck. <laughs> He was like immediately on the heart steel hate train when it took some of us like an extra week. I mean, over the course of this game, um, it seems that Orn lost lane. It was not graceful. And during the time that Orn was just stuck up here because our lanes are prolonged, like longer than they should be, because we're... Oh. Oh, wait, I think...
think we, I think I think we might have a problem. This is different. This is Mundo. Doesn't count. Stat checker. Okay. I think I'm validated in um generally putting tanks lower than you would expect them to be. <sighs> We've seen how long these lane phases have been, right? These lane phases are getting prolonged. The tanks are getting locked in lane against champions that just beat them up naturally. And even though, in theory, they should be fine, they should be fine once we get to the mid-game, they're not necessarily there right away. Because they're being trapped since they don't know the correct answer to uh, a side laner. So you have something like Malphite where it's just, you know, it doesn't fucking matter what happens to Malphite and Malphite's just going to show up and roll shit. But like Orn's lane isn't strong enough to, in every case, universally. And so maybe the fact that Orn is not a carry and has to rely on his other carry. Yeah, because, because all of these champions lose some power from relying on their teammates too much. With the exception of just weirdo Malphite. Shen earns some points. I'm, I'm trying to remember why we put Shen down here. I think because Shen earns some extra points for um, instantly reacting to fights. But long cooldown. Cooldown will be wasted for some inappropriate stuff. Um, dual potential isn't quite as good as we would like it to be, even though it's higher than others. Game plan is a little more complex than other tanks. I'm also not just a big Shen enthusiast in general, um, but like that's but the things that make Shen we, yeah, yeah, I was gonna put Shen as like a really dominant champion in platinum level, because he, the, the way I see it, the way I see Shen, his, his effectiveness definitely spikes in like mid elo. Very team reliant, it's very weird and awkward to play in like IBS in a lot of cases. You're not stomping your lanes usually. You're just probably able to trade into your lanes. And then as you go up and up and up, people get comfortable. Except for when warp factors are introduced, and Shen has a massive warp factor. Everyone forgets about Shen in Platinum. People aren't going to, like, um... The Shens aren't even going to care about some of their resource losses necessarily. People aren't going to punish the Shen ultimates exactly as they should. They generally know what to do, but, like, it's awkward. You lose fights. And then, of course, as you get higher and higher elo, like, Shen's performance falls off a little bit more because he's actually being punished. He's not going to take his ultimates if his lane is going to be instantaneously lost off of it. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I can follow that. Okay. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm down to say... Top lane... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct. I'm going to put a check mark next to that. They don't stomp. Um, can get locked in lane by dominant juggernauts hey that's another point guys juggernauts tend to beat tanks <laughs> wait a minute and like most of the top performing champions in ibs are juggernauts <laughs> okay 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 chat it is my intention to... Okay. I, it is my intention to place just a few more of these champions and then leave the rest unknown for a future iteration of the list. Do we have any champions we would desperately like to place for top lane? I'm going to include Kale. I think it's important to talk about Kale. Wukong. Okay, we'll talk about Wukong. That's an interesting one, actually. I've, I was just playing some Wukong 1v1s the other day. I actually do have some insight here. That's useful. Any other requests to add to the list before we finish with this one? Because like a lot of these are really niche picks that we don't necessarily need to talk about nor do I necessarily have the expertise to talk about them all right away. Okay, I'm gonna like, okay. Oh, I mean, we're not including these up here. Like, so some of these are viable top laners still, but I mean, the especially weird ones, I wasn't even gonna include them here. Like my regular top list, of course, has Ivern on it. It has Azir on it. It has Annie on it. 
it has Renata on it, like. <laughs> but. That's pretty much it. Well, Kane's on here. As Rost. And we list, I mean, is he even, why the fuck did we put him here? Why is he here? Why is he in too complex? Is he really that difficult to understand? No, he's not too calm. Like, no, fuck that. He actually just goes in here because his lane phase, like, his lane phase is not something that I would imagine I'd be as top laners can really vibe with. Um, unless we can put him here. Like, it's, 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 it's really up to us. Like, if so, for something to be weak, the output just has to be, like, really poor. Yeah, poor output through the IBS lens or a major macro slash team slash reactivity slash stability barrier. Um, I would then rather put him here by my own definitions of the list. Uh, yeah. And it, in that sense, we'll also put Kale up here. Um, this champion will get snowballed on. If we're really, really, I mean, because we said do not play control, do play aggro. Wukong is a champion who takes short trades or he all-ins you. Hey, Ben. What's up? We're talking about IBS play. <laughs> and Sonic! Sonic, thank you so much for the tier one sub. Welcome back to the Quindicate. Tier list is what? Finish your joke. I dare you. You ever heard of Slugma? <laughs> Alright, anyway. Uh yeah, we're just we're just finishing up on our top lane iteration. We were watching we were watching some IBS games. It's funny, Sonic, we encountered our, our, our favorite no CS mid laner just by complete accident. And yeah, I was watching Aegis Squire League, I was watching G ZGG stuff. Um, and I think I've got a much clearer perspective of how people think in this ELO now. So the lens is being developed. We're, we're just working on placing Wukong right now and then like we'll be satisfied. Unless anybody has like one of these champions they desperately want placed on our first draft. This is top lane. This is top lane only. I guess we actually do need to talk about Belveth top at some point, yeah. There's no such thing as niche here. I mean, let's just straight up get a statistic, shall we? He does comp- oh, that's jungle. He does fine. He probably cheeses some- he probably surprises people with some of his kills, right? He's definitely not going to be stat checking you, I would imagine. He's like the type of champion that isn't going to be stomping every lane by raw stats. Like some champions are just going to stonewall Wukong, but matchups don't matter, do they? Wait, no, the stat checkers are really, really disproving my matchups don't matter thing. Like. They really are. Some of these champions just win without intervention. I mean, non-complex team fight. He's really cooldown reliant. He's gonna waste his cooldowns on some weird things. He's not going to stomp lane every single time. He's gonna scale decently well. He'll always be at least a little bit useful. That sounds like a recipe for a solid, respectable champ. I'll include Belveth on the list for future inclusion. Um, just to remind myself, Belveth top is not something I've like researched a lot. Do I need to order anything in these tiers? Uh, Trundle should be up here, but his current state isn't amazing. I mean, this seems like a reasonable starting point to me. Um, I mean, so it, it, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, IBS players are not going to correctly use parry. We know they're not going to. 
and her lane phase isn't quite as strong, like, early, early, early. But she still fundamentally relies on, like, a really, a relatively simple lunge, um, and quite a lot of auto attacks. Um, also the stats just don't lie, right? Split pusher. It's just a really, really pure split pusher. This is sorted by silver. She happens to win. She's auto attack based, right? Pretty much it. Like... <laughs> And again, the only champions we deem too complex are the ones who literally are 100% spell-based, like, weaving, like, one or two autos in occasionally, or, like, they're just fucking awkward. I still don't know if Cassante belongs down here, but, like, I don't really want my Iron Bronze Silver players on Cassante, if I'm being honest. Like, I would imagine he's still, like, 2% win rate. Like, yeah, I... I think to be effective on this champ, you just actually do need to execute too much. Okay, this is our first draft then. We'll 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 take it. We'll take this one. IBS top twelve twenty three. Beautiful. Good first draft. Okay. Uh, what role do we want to talk about now? I really should not have gotten rid of that right away before remembering what my tears were. <laughs> uh, it's just my usuals, but I didn't have niche or hyper niche. this color. Mid lane, ADC, support. Fewer factors to consider than other roles. <sighs> Honestly, I probably should just do support. Like, I probably am more qualified to talk about one of the bot lane roles. And we did just... Hmm. I could just throw you all for a loop and do jungle. <laughs> Um, no, nah, fuck it. Let's do mid lane. Why not? Okay. Um, we're not going to include Aatrox in this, but I mean, well, I'll, I'll leave him just available. Uh, do, 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 do. Anything that's like giga weird, we're not going to, like, I could include Bard. I, I, fuck it. I'll leave him in my unknown tier for now. Uh, this champion actually will be good, which is shocking. Um, mm, we'll have to use that one too. Uh, yeah. That's an off meta. That's going to be bad, but we'll talk about it. Uh, this was a thing, but we're not going to talk about it. Do, 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 do. Wait. That's a weird counter pick, but probably will be more generalist down here. Oh, AP, Cog. Don't forget that. List, Solution, Lulu, Lux. I mean, there's AP Malphite, View. I mean, that is a thing. That is a thing. It's not a great one. Doin B, Nico. This is a thing, but I hate it. That's a hyper niche counter pick, so we're not going to include it. This is real. This is funny off meta. Real. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Fuck it.
Why would I sitting so long on Twisted Fate? <laughs> oh, I'm down here. Uh, yep. That's... Oh, not that one. Okay. I haven't done your solo queue jungle journey yet. True! A lot of cooked but got it back. No. Um, let's talk about what we learned a moment ago from watching some VODs here. Right. What is the IBS lens for mid lane? Well, roams are really good. Setup for your jungler is really good. Catch tools are really good. We don't want to overscale. Uh, be, we know, we know assassins are excellent in IBS. They just are. This is like the Juggernaut tier. If you're playing assassins, you're going to get random kills. You love the volatility of these games. Um, if you can execute on them, awesome. So we're looking for champions who aren't just completely vulnerable, who don't just explode, who will provide some teamfight utility, and who, more importantly, will get that snowball running. Where's the Ace ult here? He's just gonna stay an unknown for now. Like, I'm not working with him. <laughs> I would therefore imagine um, the first thing I think of... First of all, okay, what gates do not matter? Any champion that doesn't have enough damage, that doesn't matter down here. So actually, I'm gonna go right back to this one. We're gonna do like... Um, mid lane. Okay. Roams, catch... Um, set up for a jungle, all desirable. Um, don't overscale. Assassins are strong, and we don't want to be exposed to them. Champions who pop off after one random kill are very good. If your champion doesn't have enough damage... Uh, Standard. Why, why is that in quotes? Why is that in quotes? Your champion at, at standard income, that is irrelevant here. So what I would say immediately is that Vex probably goes straight into here. Um, and Vex is actually just excellent at this level of play. I would imagine, like, let's just look for assassins. Probably Katarina is, like, reasonably good. We'll, we'll start sorting some stuff up here. Katarina has to be good. Um, Fizz has to be actually good. Zed has to be good to some degree. We've seen the effectiveness of Pantheon in the games that we've been watching. Like, this is just stuff that is going to roam. I would actually... I, I would be willing to... Why are these tiers flipped? I mean, let me, let me just think, like, I'm, I'm gonna look at my standard list. I think Vex is kind of all right in, uh, on theory. Pantheon is like, all right in theory, right? Is Pantheon even, yeah, Pantheon is not sort of my list. To be dominant, you have to stomp lane, scale great, and in the context of mid lane, you need good roams, you need good, yeah. Stomp lane, scale great, good roams, good wave clear, good setup. Ah, yeah, fuck that, Vex actually does, does go up here. Vex actually goes up here in the context of IBS. <sighs> Anti-Assassin too. Yeah, no, Vex is amazing down here. Ooh. Not surprising at all. Oh, let's put this back up, by the way. Just so anybody who shows up randomly. And Vex is easy, yeah. Okay, for, for for the time being, I'm just gonna dump them all here because I mean they're they just the general way we describe powerful tier is balanced uh, balanced I/O or high output that compensates for expensive input or gates. Here it is. Output is determined. Oh wait, that's that's top lane only. Oh shit. Um, 
great output within elo context generally has dominant property what are the dominant properties here yeah dominant okay 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 mid dominant properties um is roam catch setup wave clear pick potential some team fight capability No way Zed is dropping low. And Ser Seraphine should be high too. But we also have to consider that she's a weird neutralizer and that's inherently going to be like a little less valuable. Sure, she's going... I, I I, think Seraphine like... Okay, let's think about this. I'll, I'll dump... We're, we're just going to dump champions and we'll talk about them after, okay? We're just going to dump champions. Um, Where are the common ones? Okay, uh, low key, only here. Um, same with you. Uh, where are you? You, you, yes. Um, that actually makes sense. That actually does make sense. I mean, we'll, we'll dump her here short term and we'll talk about it. Ari does actually seem to have all the properties that we would want. Yep, that makes sense. Who else has the properties? Okay, um, probably this one. I'm cooking. Give me a sec. <laughs> there we go. Reasonable time to scale. The pre-9 is like... Okay, so I mean... Okay, Talia is really, really excellent at mid to high levels of play. I'm just wondering if that 9 spike is... Like, the, the, the trough before 9 is too damning. I mean, like... Actually, we can just find out. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. She's too weak pre-9. And even though it looks like she'd be a really good roam potential, like her, her wall at level one is not actually that long range. You have to commit properly. You have to land your really complex skill shots. Oh yeah, don't give these players a vector cast unless it's like really simple like victory. That sounds hellish. Um, Zoe is probably too complex. I mean, okay, can we just like immediately do this? Um, Put Karma here. I can't think of a single champion that would be like outright oppressive unless this happens. Actually, it's probably this, to be honest. Yeah, hell no. Ah, uh, we're gonna see like a 20% win rate. Are you guys ready? <laughs> do not give your ibs players kiana unless they are literally like a hyper kiana one trick and even then like <laughs> nah, it, then we have to consider our comfort over everything rule fine you can have your kiana i can't believe how I can't believe how many, um, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry, guys. I mean, <sighs> Rise has some appealing properties, but his game plan is just so weird and uncomfortable for how IBS games typically play out. So he's definitely like Renekton tier for this. Let's 
Silas is not that complex, and I'd imagine he goes up here. Well, yeah, Renekton was here on our IVS list and top. I think Renekton's actually a pretty decent champion now. Oh, for mid lane Renek Renekton? Uh, no, actually, I would not. I would like to put mid lane Renekton uh, here, actually, in IBS. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> we forgot a staple, guys. <laughs> Realistically, she's probably here. I don't even know if Zed's here. I haven't come up with an oppressive champ yet. I mean, she's an assassin. She's really not that hard to play. It's like... I don't know. I'll come back to that one. Okay, low-key. Cassidy's good, right? Silver Cassidy is actually good. Like... Oh, it's so awkward that the lens differs on a case by case basis, like or, or roll by roll basis. It's it's so awkward that the silver lens actually changes. <laughs> Middling, of course, is yep. Z this is the zone of game plan complexity. Complexity. They have some fine output. They have, but like noticeable weaknesses fine, fine output with noticeable barriers is what I'm writing I mean cats just popping off now really I'm surprised I'm actually surprised want to cheat cheat a bit yeah no surprises on the zed well we're gonna go by raw whip <laughs> oh of course rexi mid how could i forget how could i forget yeah she's a little more on the mechanical side but she's a champion where it's like you get one thing going for you and just good job I would just imagine that, like, that one thing going for you is so much easier to come by in IBS. You know what I mean? Like... Okay, so this is... Garbage. <laughs> Trist, I can actually believe. Trist, I can 100% believe. I can 100% believe that Trist mid is good. I can 100% believe that Trind mid is good. I mean, Trist mid is good on my regular list, right? Hi, Prisma. We're working on the mid lane list right now. We're working on the IBS mid lane list. I'm, I'm actually just looking at my season 12 lists right now. So funny to see how the oppressive and dominant champions have like completely been warped. Like in my regular list, I have Malzahar up here, but... Not down here. Not in the silo. Surely this is actually just easy enough to execute that it wins right now, right? I think it should. No, he should perform better down here than... Actually, it's... Yeah, he's performing fine. I'm not a big fan of Zareth mid these days. Um, which is why I was about to place it really low. Galio's probably fine. Yeah, I would imagine. I mean, he, he's got, like... 
a lot of the dominant properties. How's this lane? I mean, don't forget, I'm just dumping and we'll talk later. Like this is this is purely vibes based right now. Like <laughs> this is purely vibes based. Long CD. Is there anyone else here who just like is noticeably strong early game? Okay, nobody's executing on Karthus properly to be, for him to be strong early game. Um, we could put Lucian in the list. Oh, uh, I think TF can't be higher than this in current state. Even though he would be fundamentally pretty decent in IBS, he's definitely a better plat champ than a better IB than an IBS champ. Like, I am willing to claim this. Guys, I think okay. I'm I, I think it's probably a little more acceptable to have a weaker early lane, but it can't be like a useless early lane or you die to the assassins, right? Like Talia is too weak for too long. Vagar is probably too weak for too long, even though I think his cage is super effective down here. His cage is super effective down here. My lens is not ah. We have to change everything. Okay. Um. Um, <laughs> pure tempo. Don't play that. I'm trying to come up with some other pure tempos. Okay, so Akali was in too complex for top lane, but I think in mid lane she's much easier to execute on for IBS players given that their targets should actually die. We'll, 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 we'll work out the definitions again. I've noticed that my definitions of my tiers are too tailored to top lane right now. That's a problem. So my way of my way of developing a lens for an elo isn't quite refined yet. It's not quite perfect. We're getting there though. We're getting closer. We're encountering problems, and and that's the important part. That like that's the important part of learning something. When I'm making this tier list for iron, bronze, silver, and I don't have the I don't have a good way of translating theory to silver. Just trying to do it and encountering problems is helpful. I'm just building it up over time. We're iterating on it. And eventually I'll find out how to properly draft for silver players and how it fundamentally differs from actual theory because we'll have, we'll have worked it properly. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, don't. Well, okay, let's actually find out. Really? Really? <laughs> hmm. I mean, Zoe surely is, right? Yeah. And Kiana, we've already established. Is he not too complex for silver players? Like... Oh, are you just getting one shots through direct queues? Oh, I think you're... Oh, they're getting one-shots through direct queues, guys. 
And in that case, his lane is like, eh, for a while, and then it wave clears, and he's, yeah, okay. If you're going to play an artillery mage, it probably should be Ziggs. Uh, maybe he's not too good. Yeah, okay. Win rates don't lie. I mean, silver players make him work, so. Yeah, and I'm checking the data, and you're actually, right? Silver players make him work. <laughs> So clearly he belongs somewhere else, and we'll figure out where. Like, he's not actually too complex. Or... Yeah, but I've... Sp I, I mean, I've spent a... L I put, like, 20 games into him last season or something like that. And he's not that hard, but to actually optimize your usefulness, he's hard. To actually squeeze all the potential out of the champion, he's fucking difficult. And the higher you go, the more you need to squeeze all the potential out of this champion. Oh. Gotcha. Core mages. I mean, Yasuo Yone have to go in the list. Okay. Yasuo goes respectable because he's gank food, but he's going to carry a lot of games. Uh, Yone is just good. Low-key, I think Nunu's probably a good mid laner here. Like, I'm sure his win rate is piss poor, but... <laughs> oh, it's worse than I thought. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Um... <laughs> might be wrong. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. So many weird champions high on the list. Like, care to argue your points? Um, I figured he just thrives in the chaos. To be honest, it's. I mean, AP Nunu is a really cringe, like feast or famine cheese pick in mid lane. Its entire purpose is to be one of those perma roamers. I figured that would just overwhelm people in IVS, and even if it starts to fall off, it is always going to do damage. But it is, like, really volatile. I mean, maybe he goes here. Maybe he goes here. I don't know where he goes. I I, I genuinely think he's more effective than this win rate would imply. Um, but probably the wave clear issue. Oh, yeah, no, his laning is so garbage, actually. Like, it's so garbage. Does it matter? You're giving somebody free gold. You're giving somebody, a f like, free means to scale. Unless they're the ones gonna- unless you're ganking your own lane. Where's Cassio in my regular list? Cassio doesn't have a lot of, like, ELO-specific bastardizations, right? She just has, like, a weak pre-tier and... You're fine, you can thrive afterwards. I'm just looking at my old mid list, which generally didn't change too much. I don't think Lissandra really needs a bit. No, Lissandra, Lissandra's probably, Lissandra's probably exactly the same power level down here. She's She hits all the properties that we want from IBS mid. Yeah, she gets all the properties we want from IBS mid. 
Ooh, this old mid list that I'm looking at is outdated. Graves is in the wrong spot. just happens yeah he really does um frankly th this one is probably just better than nunu i need to investigate that one more like how it works down here. It's it's an unusual pick, but at least I have a player who plays it so we can investigate it. Speaking of Prisma, um Okay, what does Rumble actually do? I mean, first of all, I uh, Rumble's win rate should be at least solid, right? In silver. Not tough. Yeah, it's good down here. Okay. It is funny. It is really funny. So, I mean, Champ just auto wins lanes into melee champions who are used to winning lane. So. Do we have any oppressives, guys? Do we have any oppressive? Iron Bronze Silver players, can you guys think of any champions that are just gigantic problems? People commit the silly man and perish for it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they do. We've seen it together. We've seen it many, many times. Okay, let's take a step back, guys. I'm gonna use the washroom. While I'm using the washroom, what I want you guys to do is come up with placements that you think are controversial and tell me when I come back, okay? Does that sound fair? I'm not going to go to my Be Right Back screen. I'm going to leave this list up for you, and you guys can look at it. Any big controversies here? Oh, we're just talking about Rumble. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, R Rumble's the kind of champion where, like, he's not that tricky to play, and... But he does take some time. You're only gonna be, like, only the Rumble mains are gonna be picking him. Um, but the Rumble Veins also just win certain mid lane matchups. 
and frankly can probably manage themselves. Okay, so let's let's go over what our tiers actually mean, shall we? The oppressive tier, of course, is game warping output through the lens of the elo. That means something about this champion like fundamentally changes the game and like it's 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 basically our OP tier, but for the context of like this silver lens, it's like it's just giga annoying, right? Mordekaiser was up here because he just changes everything and it's really hard for players to play around Death Realm, like Mundo, because he's just such an extreme stat checker right now. Like he's just overtuned for this elo stuff like that right when something is just blatantly overtuned and also hits all the synergy points for like, this elo the dominant champions they stomp lane they scale great they have simple team fights or split push or pick um and they hit our mid specific properties of like good roam good catch good setup good wave clear pick stuff like that right that's funny nerf <laughs> Numino scales like a monster. It's ridiculous. Uh, powerful, of course, is they have great outputs within the ELO context. Generally fewer properties or fewer extremely dominant properties than the guys up here. But the output is still amazing. Classes of champions can go in here. Mechanical barrier is okay here. These are champions with, again, good roam, catch, setup, wave clear, pick stuff like that okay respectable is when the output start like the raw output starts to fall off a little bit or it's a little more gated than before um so seraphine belongs here even though she is an ibs staple um solely because within the context of midland she's exposing herself to like a lot of really dangerous matchups ah oh, shit they matchups Nasus, is, Nasus can be a big problem in solo queue, but he can also just as likely get stomped out by something that out stat checks him. I think Nasus is disgusting, frankly, um, support, if you pick him in the right context. I think Wither is so grossly overtuned right now. <laughs> Yeah, wait, there's not okay. It's frankly ridiculous. <laughs> but that's what makes it fun. It's cringe, and I like cringe. So Syndra's here because she has a long time to scale. Cassidy's here because he has a long time to scale. Oriana, same thing. Like, these are all champions who are objectively totally fine, and what they do for your team is good, and you like having them. Um, but they're just a little less effective as a whole, like, throughout the entirety of the game than these champions. Uh, my usual stuff is... Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm still in line with my usual definitions. Middling, in the context of these lists, champions with some value, but, like, it's, it's like the zone of game plan complexity. Higher game plan complexity or just, like, really underwhelming output, but not outright weak output. Um... They're, they're they're okay, but they have like noticeable noticeable barriers. Talia gets down here because her time to scale is just so much more vulnerable than these ones within the and she has a larger mechanical barrier than the others. Like because ordinarily ordinarily Talia doesn't give a shit about her matchup, but when her matchup is consistently like these guys, um, which are not usually seen at higher levels of play, um, and she can't really fight back and she can't get the roams off that she's looking for, like it's just awkward. Okay, so actually, no, I'm generally happy with my lists. I'm just going to scour one more time. Ari, yep, Ari's good. Does Annie belong here? Annie belongs here. She's too easy. Yeah. She's too easy, and high surprise burst is always good down here. And Yep, I think Graves is fine. Okay. Actually, Vladimir's too safe, isn't he? Vladimir's probably really good down here. Not quite. Oh my god, I just got swept again. I just got swept. Josh, Jimmy, thank you so much for the raid. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate Eternal Summer 14. Thank you so much for the follow. Really appreciate it. Um, I have bad news, guys. This... <laughs> This could be an unfathomably boring stream if you're not uh, in the right <laughs> target audience. So, 
<laughs> so I really appreciate you all being here. Um, my name's Quinn. I am a competitive game analyst. Um, I specialize in League of Legends, but I really like understanding the learning process of certain games. Like I'm playing card games right now. I'm playing MOBAs, stuff like that. Um, that's my core focus as a whole. And we also have some like for fun variety streams here and there. Uh, except right now, this is like, we are literally trying to translate my theoretical knowledge to lower levels of competitive play. Um, <laughs> And it's just like, you know, we, we are literally designing a tier list for silver players right now. So I can properly draft for the silver teams that I'm putting into amateur leagues. Um, so I appreciate it. If you're not in the target audience, that's fine. I don't mind you going anywhere. If you are, if you do happen to randomly be in the target audience, that's great. We'll get on nicely. <laughs> but yeah, these guys usually raid me when I'm playing stuff like Baba is you, like the more fun stuff for crystal <laughs> yeah all right all right <sighs> well anyway thank you guys so much again i really really do appreciate the raid and the support <sighs> okay where were we i only have like 30 minutes to an hour left in me i'm trying to i, I have my sleep schedule fixed and i am not ruining it again i'm not Yeah, we have like very, the, the way I run tier lists is every tier must have a very specific definition for what falls into it. Um, so we're working on mid lane stuff right now. Um, and we've been watching some amateur VODs from like Iron Bronze Silver stuff. Um, believe it or not, this is actually one of the players that I've coached before and we just happened to run into her in these VODs. So we've been watching these, we've been trying to get a hand, like I've been trying to get into the mindset of a silver player. How do these players think? What can they handle? Like, cause we're, we're trying to approach this from a perspective of these players aren't stupid. They're obviously not stupid. They're fully capable of problem solving. It's just, this game is so complex and there's so many variables going around that there's only so many things you can keep track of at once. Um, so what strategies tend to work down there given what we're capable of keeping track of in the moment? Um, so right now we've concluded that in the mid lane role, um, a lot of assassins have higher value. I mean, we have this whole list too, right? Um, laning is sloppy, so there's a lot of games. Macro is sloppy, so that's long games. Team fights are sloppy, so there's high variance. You need to make sure you can win repeated team fights, right? We've got like all of this stuff here, and you know I've got like <laughs> so. <laughs> um. We're just working out like what's what's the thing? There's like this there's like this math uh, projections. Like we're 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 taking we're taking like the pure theory and we're projecting it onto silver and seeing how things change. So I mean I think we've got like a lot of our bases covered and I haven't found anything like controversial on the list so far. We 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 already accounted for Velkaz, who we thought was too complex for silver players, but it turns out you don't need to hyper optimize him to perform at this level of play. Um What else? What else do we need to talk about? Why silver specifically? Because um I mean, we're talking silver specifically, but it also encompasses iron and bronze. Um, because we're just starting from the bottom, pretty much. I'm trying to build up my understanding of all levels of play, um, and we're dividing them by how amateur leagues typically separate the ranks. So iron, bronze, silver, and then we're going to do gold, and then we're going to do platinum, then diamond, and then we're going to do masters. Um, and by the time we get up to challenger, the lens that I'm going to need isn't that different from the pure theory. It's just like from me studying the games like on the analyst desk. Um, oh yeah, by the way, I... <laughs> And for everyone who just came in, like, I'm not talking out of my ass. I literally have been on the analyst desk for, like, Masters Capped Leagues and stuff. I I do have a decent understanding of, like, how to approach different levels of play that I keep building up over time. That's, like, one of my favorite accomplishments lately, actually. <laughs> um, so that, that's why silver, because we're going to do all of them. We just have to start somewhere. And so I may as well start with the level of play that I'm helping a team through. <laughs> Build a foundation up. 
Okay, so, like, let's just... Vladimir was proven to win slightly less than I expected, but, like, I mean, his laning is piss poor. He really can't skirmish very well. He... You know what? Yeah, then he goes Orianna tier. He needs time to scale. Um... Even though I do think he's better than he has been in the past, right? Basically, Rocky for... I'm a professional there. I'm trying to be. <laughs> Close. I did get paid. It's... <laughs> Rocky Esports, Rocky Box. <laughs> they did just release a mockumentary recently. It was on like Paramount Plus. They just made it free. It's called Players. It's it follow so so my understanding of the synopsis, it follows like the most unlikable fictional esports pro as his entire team just has to deal with him and they're trying to win finals. Like specifically League of Legends too. I had to watch it at some point. It sounds really cringe, and I want, but everyone says it's great. Like, so. yeah, that would be cool. And it's like, <laughs> just one of the plot points. One of the plot points is just like your diet sucks. You're eating way too much KBBQ. Way too much. Stop it. This is your seventeenth DoorDash this week. <laughs> Uh... <laughs> okay. There's this montage of like training your thumb muscles. <laughs> just like, you're just like, all right, push ups, right? Uh, 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 wrist stretches, let's go. <laughs> Don't get carpal tunnel. That's the carpal tunnel arc. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that would be pretty funny. I would like that a lot. Oh, we don't have Talon. Assassin. Easy, I, e easy assassin. Really easy assassin. Like, unusually good at this level of play. When usually in the mid lane, I'd kind of say he's not amazing. And I don't really love him. Let's... Oh, hang on. First of all, probably... It's way higher than I thought. Way lower than I thought. Well, I mean, you on my usual tier lists, Talon goes down here. So, but I just, I, I guess I just overshot on my conversion, right? We need to talk about neutralization value. How much value is there in a defensive neutralizer like Zillion? who does objectively win a lot at this level of play. It's weird. Black Mirror. I haven't watched enough Black Mirror. I don't watch enough TV in general. I'm so behind on like every show that people like. I still haven't seen Breaking Bad. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to watch it eventually. I just don't watch TV. Like, ah, <laughs> uh, there's too many weirdos in this list. Like, too many of the niche strange champions. I mean, I could just dump a few, right? Surely Quinn Mid is bad. And Silver, right? What? Come on! What are you dying to? Like this champ can't lane. Why? Is, I can't translate easily at all. It's so hard. We're also not going by pure win rates, like because that would be irresponsible and reckless and just. But like, what are you dying to? How are you dying? Like. <laughs> I, heard, I hear nothing but good things about it. I hear nothing but good things about Breaking Bad. <gasps> Wait, this is... Mm, mm. Any other unorthodox assassins? Is Uction too complex? Uction surely too complex. Uction is surely way too difficult for people to play. I'm... <laughs> I 
can't predict how any of these matchups or any of these win rates are turning out. I, I can't. Is Rakan too complex? Well, Rakan is weird. Like, Rakan mid is not really a thing. You have to play a certain way, and I'd imagine if I went... So, so no, first of all, no. I mean, Rakan is mechanically simple enough. I would imagine if you... <laughs> I mean, the sample size is absolutely useless. The sample size is not useful at all. <sighs> Where do I have Rakan on my own list here? I have Rakan unsorted on my core, like, pure theory list from before Season 13 rolled around. There's probably a fair bit of Silver Garen mid-enthusiasts, and they're probably doing just fine. And in fact, actually, I saw him up here. Um, yeah, 54% win rate. I've earned 54% win rate with the most useless sample size you've ever seen. Wait, I'm putting Ivern in too complex on a fallacy. So Ivern is here because I'm thinking of how I try to play Ivern. And I'm like, okay, I got a micro daisy. I got to make sure my shields are going on the right targets. I have to weave in my auto attacks properly. These are like three completely distinct mechanical skill checks. Wait a minute. Silver players don't care. They're going to first daisy on someone and then they're going to E. And then he's fine. Analytics. <laughs> Analolytic. You've ruined this site for me. It's... <laughs> it's... It's... Un you, you've ruined this. What do I do now? <laughs> No, we're not using UGG. Look, I'm not giving up my win rate deltas. I'm not giving up all. I'm not giving up this many stats. I'm not going to UGG. Um, I mean, I'm gonna like, kind of, haha, funny. I mean, it does straight up say anal in it, so it's probably. That's probably why it's not called that. But. Boop. Actually, I have him here. Default. Is he too weak early? Does this matter? No, he's pretty safe. I mean, you try to combo him. Silence. I think Cho'Gath mid is so much better than Cho'Gath top, at least for right now. Um, how does Vagar do? Okay, so like, we're hitting another fallacy. Some scaling champions are just excellent because apparently they're shutting things down reliably enough, or they're just non-interactive enough. Like, look, it's, it's the utility champs. Wait, wait Seraphine, Seraphine is not... Yeah, Seraphine's like the exception. And Karma is a giga exception. Who's not just not winning solo queue. But like... I do have her here and I think she belongs. We've got a small group of low... Low play rate utility champions. Who just perform much, much, much better than expected despite a relatively weak lane phase. Which is trying to communicate something. He's trying to... It's This, this, this trend is trying to communicate something to us. I just need to figure out what the words are. Because I don't want... I don't want to accidentally just take raw win rate and run with that. Because win rate is like the most useless metric in a vacuum. You have to know what the cause is. Oh, this is a rumble situation. Hang on, I'm wrong about this. It's a rumble situation. He builds lethality and one shots at people who come into him. Yeah. Are these characters perhaps the most approachable? So Zillion is weird. Ivern absolutely is not approachable. Like I Ivern is not the type of champion that I would recommend to brand new players. Zillion, I mean, okay. So, Zillion is the type of... Uh, basically, for anyone who doesn't know what Zillion does, Zillion is a very defensive utility champion. He has one damaging ability, which you can double up. You can cast it twice, because you can reset his cooldowns with one of his other abilities. Um, but the name of the game in... I, I, I Okay, and, and the core thing you need to know about his ultimate, he puts it on a teammate, and if, it, if while that buff is active, they die, they get revived instantly. Like, they just don't die. And that ultimate is one of the most game-changing things in the game. 
because it just prevents you from being picked. It just prevents you from losing a key carry in a fight. But Zillion is so astronomically weak in the early game, and this is a level of play where aggression tends to win out. And where having more carries is usually a good thing. But here we are with like traditionally weak early laners. Orn is up here, a tank, 52% win rate in the mid lane. Zillion, 52% win rate in the mid lane. Malzahar, 52% win rate. This one makes sense. Malphite, 52% win rate with a honestly not negligible sample size. That's 22,000 games in silver. So what is this saying where we have these champions who kind of violate the conventions we've laid out for ourselves? Where these champions aren't strong early and they do just provide overwhelming utility. Well, Zillion's countering assassins, that's for sure. Um, what justifies early weakness in the mid lane? They do always scale, yes, yes. Good early game is strong, good late game is necessary. Zillion <laughs> isn't a real <laughs> It's just but but every single game we've observed tonight and like Yeah, every single game we've observed tonight implies that the team that just snowballs Unless they throw massively finds it easy to close out because fights that should never happen when you're trying to come back happen. Oh, but Zillion warps those fights. Zillion warps those fights. Early weakness mid can be justified. If you have unusual utility to neutralize small advantages, um, performs best in the mages. That's the thing. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's it's mages. It's mage matchups. I guarantee you, it's mage matchups. Let's find out. The mages aren't snowballing out of control. The mages don't benefit from chaos early the same way that like the top laners will or junglers will, right? You're playing these into... Oh, ah, oh, these sample sizes don't tell me anything. This, nothing below Malzahar can be considered a real data point because you don't have 200. And even the, we can't know, we can't know. We can't know definitively, but that's my theory. I, I think it's just... Mages tend to play for incremental advantages. There's less opportunity to get raw stat checked. There's a lot less opportunity to get raw stat checked. There's no... Oh! It's harder to make a mistake that just instantaneously kills you. And if you're playing Zillion... By the time these champions get their threatening abilities to actually like 100 to 0 you, you have yours. You're revive. You're not going to die to it. You're going to force them to burn all their cooldowns. So, yeah, you actually are still an effective neutralizer. And I've been thinking about this the wrong way because I'm still tr I've still been thinking about this top lane. These champion like yeah. Orn isn't assassin food. Zillion isn't assassin food. Oh, okay. It's just, it's just early weakness. Okay. If not assassin food. Lovely. We've, okay. That's, that's what we're going to roll with for right now. And if we need to refine that theory later, then that's fine. We're fine with that. Um, I'd imagine Diana mid can get away with some bullshit down here. Um, I'd imagine Echo mid gets away with some stuff that he shouldn't. Like, Echo's... Echo's fine. 
nothing inherently wrong with him. I mean, we can also just find out and... Yep, fine. 51. This is probably also going to be around 50. Yeah, she's up here. Beautiful. I actually probably would like to include Scion on my list if I haven't. Oh, good, he's in here. Oh, I'm so excited that we at least have a satisfying answer to that question. And that also, that also changes our understanding of, like, Anivia, too. Um, I'm going to attempt to predict Anivia. I think... I think Anivia does win more often than she loses in Silver. The reasons being, Anivia doesn't have the typical properties that make you dominant in mid lane. Um, she is fundamentally a control champion. And that's scary to play in IBS, but at this level of play, we're, all, we're usually A-ramming stuff. We're, people are going to be pushing down like one lane. Anivia neutralizes that trivially. Anivia does have excellent catch tools. Like, excellent catch tools. I think her early weakness can be justified because it's the same thing as Zillion. I don't think she's inherently assassin food to low elo assassins. I'm going to predict she belongs up here, and we're going to find out if she's 51 or something. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <gasps> Victor gets kills and augments like crazy. I did. I, I had him with the rest of the utility, like a lot of the conventional mages here, but no, he's just getting kills, isn't he? He defends himself more effectively. Yeah, okay, Victor can go here. Uh, we're getting into like the weirdo territory where a lot of these champions are just unorthodox and strange, and we'll, we'll probably have to talk about Aurelia. Probably say this. We'll probably have to talk about Karthus. Probably have to talk about Kled. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put every champion up here. I don't have to care about every one of them right now. The more important thing is the fundamental concepts. What's up, Zolo? We're learning about Silver. Twitch mid is that unorthodox? Yeah, it's it's gaining popularity now, but definitely not a typical pick. Seems like a smurf thing. No, it's better than that. 100% better than that. It's got matchups where it does actually generate pretty reliable wave clear, and just the spontaneous perma roam potential is valuable in some situations. I mean, it's weird. I've, I've it's underexplored right now. Two smurf thing. You could just find two smurfs and win the game. <laughs> but no, I mean, like. This is the thing. There's. There's a lot of legitimate strategies that players write off as just cheese. Yeah! I did it. Oh, by the way, any Magic the Gathering players in here? If there's any Magic the Gathering players, you enjoy card games a lot. Play Legends of Runeterra. I'll play with you. Really, really fun game. Great economy. My favorite digital card game. Not close. Because I actually get to have cards without paying. <laughs> Cow Sub Junior. <laughs> you just saw Master Yi once and that was it? You're playing? We need to talk about Vagar. I don't know why I haven't. Oh, Cowset plays magic. Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. It's like a very small group of Yu-Gi-Oh players, I think, around my circles. I'll try to weed them out. <laughs> like, find them. Not, 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 not push them. That's, I realize how weed them out might sound. Not my intention. <laughs> I 
Okay, um, I mean, what just sucks? Is there anything that just sucks down here? Like, what would fundamentally suck? Tempo champs. Any good, any, any huge tempo champs that, like, literally rely on these early advantages? And if they throw once, it's over. I get, that doesn't really happen as much mid. Anything that relies on team play falls off. Lucian! Yeah! That is fundamentally a tempo champ. All of the value he's giving you from the mid lane is tempo for your jungler, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. Anything that does really rely on team play is weekend. Yet we have a Zir here for a longer time to scale and team play stuff. Um, Kog'Maw's time to scale, I would imagine, is too long. And I mean, worst case scenario, he's probably right here because he's still relatively simple. Just artillery mage stuff. Um, imagine knowing. I don't know anything. <laughs> Um, this is, this is tempo. This is tempo. This is really tempo. It sucks because like my entire weak tier in pure theory is occupied by champions that are like up here. And powerful. And that's so frustrating. Yes, it is. Not this one, but in my normal one, yes. He, Aphelios didn't make the IBS list. <laughs> in my normal list, he is there, yeah. Yeah, that's a loon. A loon is here and uh, Silco is here somewhere. Here he is. I know. I wear it proudly. So, so Zolo, we would we would assume that yes. This, here, these are these are our premises, right? These are our premises. Iron Bronze Silver play. Laning is sloppy, so we have high kill games. Macro is sloppy, so we have long games. Team fights are sloppy, so we have high variance, right? High laning power, high scaling, and strong catch tools are all desirable. The thing is, from actually watching practical IBS games, we found out that this one is not actually as true as we thought it was, because these players just fight. They ju they, they actually do close out the game more reliably than you'd think, still not reliably. Um, so just raw scaling power isn't enough. You do have to be able to either win your lane or shut down like what the enemy is doing really consistently, which is scary because, again, we don't want to be running control. We need simple game plans. Um, so yeah, scaling is generally good, and I'd actually imagine Vagar. I mean, Vagar's assassin food. I'm, I'm gonna kind of predict a 49, I'm not gonna lie. Even though he has the stacking mechanics. I'm wrong. He has the stacking mechanics that usually makes a champion good at low elo. I just figured he'd lose. <sighs> is mid lane just... I mean, mid, mid lane is just safer than top lane. That's always been true. He just catches stuff, like, oh, but catch, oh, his catch is so good. His catch is so good. What's the actual gate here? What's the actual gate? Early weakness? Do we care? Is he safe? Fuck it. LeBlanc is definitely more of a tempo champion and will fall off in combat for a while and she's going to feel really awkward in standard IBS team fights. but she's also not that hard to play and her pick potential is excellent and she'll, she's a little bit gated, but I'll put her here. Um, 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 um. It's just a first draft too. I'm fishing some stuff out from here to just include because this used to be a thing and it is on my other lists. Where's Pike? It's gonna be a while. Um, I do want to actually finish my lore climb first. Like, I don't wanna overwhelm my brain. The point of what I'm doing is to like get good at learning stuff. And if I just skip straight ahead to TFT, then it's gonna kinda sabotage that goal. Unfortunately. You'd think so. You'd really think so. And 
I know we're not using just win rates, but like... Silco's on this list because he used to be a unit in TFT. You'd really think so. It, do it does cause a lot of chaos, but like... But don't forget, raw chaos is actually more of an answer to plot than IBS. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. Like, <laughs> Introducing pure chaos is better in Platinum than it is in IBS. You don't really need mechanics to play Pike, but I mean, you still do need mechanics. You really do. I'd be willing to put him here, to be honest. Like, Pike mid still has to land difficult skill shots. Granted, the players aren't going to be dodging as much. He does have access to wrath. <laughs> uh, I don't really want to place too many of these weirdo champions anymore. I'm just going to say, like, hi wait, did we... No, this, this is Aurelian Soul, and uh, he's just... So Aurelian Soul is a champion that should be infinitely more popular than he is because everybody loves the appeal of this champion, but he is so fundamentally awkward to play that nobody actually enjoys playing him. And therefore, even though he might be good, he is literally the least researched and understood champion in the entire game because nobody cares. <laughs> I genuinely think he's actually pretty fine right now. <laughs> like, like at normal levels of play. Like if I, yeah, he like he wins in D two plus, right? It, no, he doesn't see play in D two plus, but. There are five actual. That's actually a misconception. That's actually a misconception. Like it's not. It's not just a bunch of one tricks playing him. Do you see where he is on this breadth depth spectrum? If it were just, if it were just one tricks, it would actually be way the hell up here. But I, I heard this from Riot August, who has more information, he has more direct data. Um, a lot of people actually try Aurelian Soul and actually do reasonably well on him and then drop him because they feel like they have zero impact even though they're winning games. That's actually how he works. <laughs> like... <laughs> Which is so weird. So, so, so weird. I'm not saying ASOL is free wins, please. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's, it, if Rod of Ages was buffed and was actually really strong, I think Aurelian Soul would become scary. It's not. It's not. <sighs> Which I'm, I'm I'm kind of excited to see where his rework lands. Like, they are changing him from the ground up. Like, none of his abilities are surviving. Except kind of the E in a way. Like, It's actually cool how top-heavy these low elo graphs are. Really proves that it basically doesn't matter what you're playing. As long as you know how to play it. Yeah, the few people who genuinely enjoy Asol for what he is now are going to be really upset, and I do feel bad for them. Because this very explicitly is the deletion of a champion. I 
wonder if Aurelia is high here too. She is. Okay. So it's the same as top lane where this is like one of the mechanical champions they can actually kind of handle. Earth the manatee treatment. <laughs> oh, I'm still placing off vibes once in a while. Like, I feel like I feel like I'm following win rate too closely. It's a first draft. I don't care. I don't think they will ever delete a champion that actually released. I, I can imagine this actually just being good instead of a niche pick. Well, because we don't have niche picks on this list. They don't exist. Aatrox was not actually deleted. I mean, he was reworked to the point that he's a fundamentally different thing. But I mean, like, literally a champion removed from the game. Like, by name, by skins, by everything. Like... Mord changed really fundamentally too. Like there were definitely some reworks that did not hit the base or hit the mark with like their old player base. I need to be specific again. Hang on. I need to be specific. Um Stomp's lane, skills create some team fights, okay. Powerful, great output within ELO context. Generally less uh does Karthus what is Karthus? Does Karthus hit our core pat properties? unusual utility to neutral I mean like we like roam catch so I mean I'm just gonna include good scaling like scaling is appealing here This really isn't weak early. You just have to be able to play him. Can people play him? Kind of no, but it doesn't matter because he has his ultimate. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually bewildered that silver players can pilot Akshun. I'm going by this. Which, again, he is winning a lot. I know what you would think, right? But why is here here Zolo, let's 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 play the, let's play a thought experiment then. Why is Karthus and Loilo not good? Even with his ultimate. What happens? What what specifically causes him to be bad? If it's mechanical execution, there are I mean Karthus just shits out Skittles, right? You can afford to miss like half of them, because your opponents are missing half of them too. Like, He, he breaks our mechanical prodigy rule where the mechanical prodigy rule is like mechanical prodigies do exist in low elo um but their champions still have to be able to rely on something if they miss their some of their key abilities um that's actually a better way to generalize it because i was gonna say no so karthus doesn't break our rule because karthus can just rely on follow-up cues i was thinking of like aurelia who just relies on auto attacks yasuo auto attacks yone auto attacks right usually the auto attackers but i've just realized it generalizes more than i thought But like I'm trying I'm trying to throw away any preconceived notions of what these players can and can't play. Because that just sabotages my actual proper view of what happens down here. So the data is telling me Karthus wins. A win rate on its own is useless. What do I do? You know, I'm actually willing to put him here because I think, I mean, but his lane isn't weak, but his lane's only not weak if you're hitting, but his lane can be strong if you're, I mean, Car yeah, Karthus level one is fucking disgusting, but like you have to be mechanically capable. <laughs> Karthus always thrives in like chaos skirmish. Um, because if you're just in a grossly high kill game and Karthus is profiting at all, eventually his scaling becomes like a massive problem. 
Um, and that does happen down here. Strong early, strong late. No, I'm willing to put him here. I'm willing to put him here. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm going through the properties here. I think he hits most of them. You're not going to see many Karthus players, like, but the few players who do main him are going to be fine. Um, this is the, the stuff that actually gets down into this list is the stuff that really has no fallback. I really thought that Shun would fall down. I mean, how is Gangplank not here, though? Like, really? Players can hit barrels? Like, I guess they could just queue. They're just queuing. They're just queuing. <laughs> I don't really feel the pressing desire to place any of these right now, so I'm willing to leave them in unknown. We just have to figure out what's happening with Akshun. And I'm like fucking bewildered that players can pilot him. But like, where did he go on my top list? My IBS top. I think I put him in respectable because he's a huge, huge, huge gank target on the top lane. He's gonna bully really hard, but he just puts a target on his back. But he's an assassin. What? Okay, one second. Cannot explain how that happened. Give me a moment. Okay, sorry. Must have hit a button by accident. What is Uction's core weakness in the mid lane? Let's see. What properties does he hit? He has decent wave clear. He has great pick potential. He really doesn't have great team fight capability at all. His scaling is like okay. He has good roam. He has catch. I don't think he. Uh, I mean, if Quinn is performing well down here in the mid lane. And Uction has a lot more maneuverability. I think he probably hits the mechanical prodigy clause. And like, I mean, I know we saw like a win rate here that was like favorable. It was like comparable to Quinn's. Oh, Quinn's was way better, actually. Funny. Oh, because she's roaming way better than he is, right? Most time players can hit minions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the time you're like silver, you should be farming decently. The bronze players are gonna be struggling a little bit still. Um, the iron players are really gonna be like that. That that's like their number one thing. When you're in iron and you're struggling to get out, you learn to farm. That's pretty much where it starts. <laughs> so these are players that we're expecting to have like relatively okay farm. Not great, but because their fundamentals aren't down yet, right? <sighs> Why does Quinn win as much as she does? Is it she? It's a poor sample size, but it's not a negligible sa sample size. <laughs> That's so fucking funny, man. The 57% clad. Wait, no, isn't he actually just... Wait, hang on, hang on. Oppressive means you have game warping... No, dominant. Wait, dominant is just stomp slain, scales great, simple team fights or split push or pick. I think we might need to populate dominant a little more. I think there's definitely a few champions that could graduate up to dominant. I'd be willing to wager this one belongs. Like, Trist is just an amazing low elo champ in general, right?
Well, I mean, we don't have any oppressive champs right now. Is that okay? Is that normal? Is there anything else that realistically should be too complex? Your win rate is just too high for me to... I mean, what's your, what's your actual core thing holding you back in Respectable if you're Quinn mid in Iron, Bronze, Silver? Ah, this is where the ranged top bullies go to become menaces on the map because they're not getting ganked as easily. <laughs> okay, I just want to check Pantheon. Because I wouldn't be surprised if he did graduate to dominant. I think he joins fights too quick. Yeah, you know what? I think it's completely reasonable for us to put Panth up here. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna trust my gut on what makes for a really good IVS champion. Maybe you stay down there. Yeah, I think we probably start like this. Okay, chat, last chance to influence our first draft. Does anything here look completely controversial or weird to you? Is there anything we have yet to explore? Is there anything more that needs to be talked about? Scion. We don't have Scion there. Right, okay, Scion. Um, Scion mid, I think, is a really, really funny counterpick to certain assassins. If you if, if you take a Rome-reliant assassin and then just drop... If, if, if you take Scion and then just, like... Um, sorry, I'm getting... I'm, get it, I'm, I'm reading chat, and it's sending my brain into thinking about the second point. So let's address the second point first. You're right. You're 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 just right, by the way. I put her here originally. I bet she's probably a good champion in gold. But in IBS, you're right. And we've even had that confirmed with some of the win rate data that we were talking about earlier. Like there's actually a reason to back up this stuff. The only reason I had her up there originally is because um again type of champion that pops off with just one thing going wrong and this is a this is a level of play where things are going to go wrong um but she doesn't have fallbacks she doesn't she doesn't have the sort of fallback thing that we were arguing for in favor of karthus and so it's like she's fine she's an assassin but yeah and you know what cassidy comes up here off the zillion rule like the same reason as zillion um Mmm, I see. I see, I see, I see. The the top laners, junglers, and supports are really incentivized to go sicko mode and just stomp the game. The mid laners and the ADCs probably want to trend like a little bit more towards scaling as long as their champion can actually survive what's coming at them. I think that's probably it. Anyway, Scion mid. I'm sorry, Karibo. I'm very sorry. Um, Scion mid, I think, is a really funny counterpick to certain assassins. Like, if you did just want to shove and roam, uh, you just put this brick shit house of a tank with massive wave clear to completely neutralize them. Um, on top of that, having some... <sighs> better access to the rest of the map allows... Like, it, it unlocks a couple more ultimate plays. You're intended to be playing tank scion, um, from this position. It's it's not like like AD. I don't think AD scion has the same level of freedom. He gets a lot of ganks. Mm, that thought's undeveloped. Don't quote me on that one. But that's the general premise behind scion mid, and maybe it should be placed. And frankly, probably go here.
I want to be very clear about my stance on Katarina, guys. She's the actual bottom of my theoretical tier lists. <laughs> this champ sucks. <laughs> this champion blows, but she thrives in chaos, and so she's actually reasonably good in solo queue. High warp factor, pretty much. Just... But, like, I dare you to pick her in competitive. I dare you. <laughs> yeah, basically, basically. Okay. If you can reliably not be snowballed on, you can justify a weak lane. Ah, uh, okay. I think this is fine for our first draft, and it's funny how much it differs from what else I was doing. I'm just gonna put him there and see what happens. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Hey, come on. Oh, it's right. What am I doing? Beautiful. Okay. Oh, uh, it's 12:20, guys. So let's recap today then. I'm, I'm gonna finish up. Let's recap today. Today, we decided to actually, instead of talking purely about theory, we decided to actually watch some IBS VODs. Right. What did we find? We found that IBS players love flocking to fights immediately. Um, if anything breaks out, they're all there. We found that aggro strategies are really, really, really rewarded. We found that picks occur differently than I thought they did because it's really just everybody setting up for a fight and they'll all swarm and, you know, like just burst kill, get into a chaotic fight. It's messy, but in a different way. The games don't go as long as I thought they would. Aggro is really good. It changes what's strong a little bit. And it proves, unfortunately, the matchups don't matter theory um, is a little more nuanced than I was proposing. So matchups don't matter at an interaction level, but you still have to make sure you're not going to pick something that's just generally weak in lane and going to get stomped out. Um, we've discovered that scaling can be just a boon if it's not possible for any of your matchups to like threaten you too much. So in the mid lane, if you're not assassin food, you can justify not having a strong early lane. Uh, it's much harder to justify in the top lane because that's where the stat checkers have a lot of fun. Um, and then from there, we, I mean, we determined the a lot of the good properties of mid laners. We determined that low cooldowns are obviously good because we're wasting tools. Um, we determined that, yeah, we do just group. AOE is good, ranged CC is good. Um, we learned that players do actually try to dive, which also becomes a problem for weak early laners. And so we just, in general, understand more about this. Now, everything that I know about IVS is still scattered to the winds in a million different notes. You know, it's my tier list, it's this document, it's multiple pages here, like, it's just everywhere. Um, so I'll have to sit down and codify it a little more. But... We get it. So, off stream, I will work on just refining what my tier definitions mean so they're a little more flexible and can be adapted to each role. And then I can just like plug in the appealing properties within each role um, without like rewiring in my brain what each tier means. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be climbing in Legends of Runeterra, so we're not going to be continuing this. Um, or if I don't climb in Legends of Runeterra that Sunday, the plan is for Sunday to be this for the remaining three rolls, because we actually know what we're talking about now. And if lore is on Sunday, then this goes Monday, right? 
So I'm happy with where we are right now. Again, if you disagree with anything on this list, this is my first draft. We will work things out over time as my understanding deepens, right? Because this is not going to be a perfect list. It's not, it can't be. I haven't seen most of these champions in action at this level of play. I'm going by win rates and loose theories and rules and heuristics and like just hunches sometimes. <laughs> and we even saw I put Katarina up here because my, my hunch was wrong. It just wasn't accurate. Alas, that'll be it for tonight, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to love yourselves, respect each other, and I will see you all next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.